Yes, guys, welcome to the first ever podcast I've ever done. I, well, I, as a host, and uh, I've got my guest today. I feel like this is really awkward already. <laughs> I'm doing it. Well, I've got oh, my yeah, I've got, I was about to tell you to go again because I'm just scratching my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, like, I've got my guest here. What is your name? My name is Alistair Law. But most people know me as the human Dennis the Menace. As Lee likes to call it. Oh, my name's Ali Law, right? I'm, I'm talking to you. Ali Law. Uh, I think before we start, uh, you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence when questioned something which you may later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Whilst we're getting real on the podcast, people that may not know that you used to actually be a police officer, and that's why Lee actually knows the. What do you call that? What's the. Giving your rights to someone. That's actually, how. This is, a, this is a serious. People actually believe that I used to be a police officer when I definitely didn't. Oh, we've got to be serious on this. I no, you can joke on a podcast. Can you? Oh, yeah, no. But no, but I, some I, people will switch off now and then be like, f- they'll be telling their mates, like, Lee actually used to be a police That's why he gets away with I this thing. I definitely don't get away with anything. I heard it on the podcast. I heard it. He said it. Uh, yeah, he said it. Right, enough messing about. We're going to be serious here. Very serious. Um, firstly, Lee, I should join your management team. You've got a role to sponsor. Oh, bit. shout out to this company. I've been repping them for a while. Step one. Now they make underwear. This is material is made out of bamboo, and all their boxers are like this. And it's got, it's got this cool bit underneath. Look, they're like sports boxers, but this is like an anti chafe thing. It's, they are so comfortable. Like I wore them. They approached me, and I was like, you know, they're semi products, and I've been repping the old. Uh, I nearly said two words at the same time. Do you ever go to say ropping? No, you know when you go to say two words, like I went to say rocking and repping, it comes yeah, out as like. Come out, yeah, in the same but that, no, it's got like the front bit comes out because, you know, blokes aren't flat, flat like a girl. A girl is flat, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't like, it, a, guy, isn't it? <laughs> a guy comes out, his penis comes out, so as this bit actually comes out properly, it actually like cups your bollocks kind of thing. So it's handy if you've got big balls. What if you don't have big balls? You just, they'll just be floating around in the little bit that comes out. <laughs> no, no, but they're seriously, the owners put a lot of thought into these. Yeah. I've worn them for a few days. I've wrecked clothes, and yeah. these are absolutely fine. But I re- really like them. This ain't even my brand deal. Um, I'm rocking them out. This is, I'm it's rocking all, them as well. Lee's, I love free boxes, but Lee's looking up there, yeah? <laughs> Honestly, I'll be dead honest, yeah? <laughs> I, I'm a Primark boxer kind of guy. I didn't realise, I thought boxers were boxers, but these are actually very good boxers. They're proper comfortable. Like, it just feels smooth, isn't it? Like, the material. I'm not even, this ain't even my brand deal. I don't have to say nothing about no, it. No, they're but already good. They're good they're boxers. Up, yeah. I'll give them that. They, they've hooked Lee up. They've sent him a load of pairs of boxers. Um, I'm more yeah, about... It's a good, good brand. Solid brand. Solid, solid pair of boxers. And I'm hoping, after they see this, uh, please send me some. I would really like a lot of boxers, please. I'm more about practicality of stuff. So, when they come, and I was like, oh, these are actually nice. Yeah, they're actual proper solid boxers. And, like you said, they don't rip. Mate, the amount of boxers I go through, just ripping them little holes, do you know what I mean? Skidders. <laughs> Skidders. <laughs> a lot, mate, but these are solid. No, they're good. Like, even no, they're like, good. Even they're without good. white, I've had some, like the white ones you've got, with, that's why I've given you a white pair. <laughs> dangerous. White, 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 white boxes aren't good for me. No, white boxes are dangerous. <laughs> but After you get, what, what age is it they start becoming dangerous? Twenty. Uh, when I was from 28 onwards, started God. getting a little bit of rim seepage. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't, I didn't really, if any birds is watching. No, Suck it, I've started early, I'm getting out of 24, a little bit of room seepage. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing to talk about, isn't it? No, people don't talk about stuff like that, do they? But I don't know, maybe they do, but they don't talk about it openly on podcasts. In do they not? Of, in front of 100,000 people, I don't know. Um, so where are we going? That, that made me think about something. What? Either girls, when you've met them or been out, Go to the toilet bit and absolutely baby wipe their bum. I do think, how can they have the freshest bum hole <laughs> after a night out? <laughs> like, you're not even scared that my tongue's right by it. <laughs> if I'd been on a night out and it goes, <laughs> and it goes anywhere near my bum, I'd be like pushing their oh, fingers yeah. away. <laughs> oh, dangerous <laughs> territory. Like, girls, no, like, no fucking seepage at all. You go. You lick my ass, it's going to be fine. Do you know what I love about this? My favourite part is some executive. At step one, <laughs> <laughs> the mark, the head of marketing campaign is going to be watching it over, <laughs> watch a little bit into the podcast and see what it's about. First conversation. Oh yeah, my bum hole. 
boxers. It's ba- well, it's that era, isn't it? True, true. I don't think true. I'm one of them people. Anything associated with like it goes off. It's like a tree. No, it just it ends up, off. Anything that can go, it just oh. ends up talking about bumhole. No, right. Let's steer away from that subject. <laughs> I do like that subject though. He loves that subject. Rimming. No, let's move uh, let's move away. But so before I met you, no, what I wanted to talk about this I want to talk about you like from the beginning of your life. So very beginning. Just a quick uh, it just back. a quick uh quick like, like primary overview. school, secondary school, what what sort of things was you up to? What did you ever see yourself doing? Like where did you see yourself going? What sort of upbringing did you have? What did you do? Where do we start? From so like, I, I might as well talk as well, isn't it? Like, so my upbringing was like, you know, I used to play out in the woods, build tree bases. Yeah, you've actually got a mad upbringing. Like, hearing the stories of, remember the guy come out of a gun? Like, I've heard a lot about your life. The guy, mate, he come, like, Lee's had a mad, like, he's, he's just this guy that has stories about everything. And he's a man of many talents. He can do everything. Like, I remember we were in Bali, going a bit off topic, but he's like, I was like, oh, can you wheelie a quad? And I don't know, you didn't say, like, you could. Next minute... <laughs> He's two on wheels. two wheels, like cruising down. Yeah, Even that's not. That's the, just some weird thing. No, but no, just the fact that you can just do everything. But yeah, like, steering off. But he's got some mad stories as a kid. But yeah, similar. Like I was always my mum. You met my mum. She's very like careful, and my my older brother. She's very careful with, and like wrapped him in. What's the word? Like cotton wool. What's that saying? Like wrapped him in bomb. I was wrapped in cotton wool. Yeah, wrapped in cotton wool. Like looked after him. My older brother wasn't allowed to do anything, and then my second brother was sort of had, had a bit more freedom. By the time it got down to me, third child, there was a lot more freedom, and I was fucking down the woods. Like, my mum wouldn't let me down the woods. I was down the woods, fucking climbing trees, falling down hills, falling out of trees, fucking pushing each other down in the wheelie bins, like the council wheelie bins, pushing each other down the hills and shit. Like, all that sort of. Knocked or run, good old knocked Good old run. knocked out. I want to do oh, a vid. I want to do a video. Things you can do, you do as a kid. As an adult. That's not acceptable as an adult. Yeah, not, well, we called it knockdown ginger. Yeah, I don't know. Did you call it knockdown ginger? Nah, knocked up. I've heard. No, that is a thing. It's more. It seems to be knockdown ginger. I put a Twitter poll up once, and it seems to be knockdown ginger is more popular than knocked or run. I think I only called it knocked or run. <laughs> but even, where am I from? But it even, don't make sense. Well, even as a, that's happening though. Even as a vid, even <laughs> the, even as an adult, it weren't that long ago. Where there's a house we always used to knock down ginger in story. <clears throat> And uh, when the train crossing was in, we just I'm like said to my brother, get out and press the doorbell, and then sit back in the car. <laughs> the the blokes that used so like, as well, when you're at oh what and you just sit a, there and act. This is a few months ago. Just knocked on his door, so, <laughs> then you sat back in the car like. What and then he comes out and he just didn't. Expect- but he's that used to people doing it. He just literally just undoes the door. Oh, which, oh, just that again. What? Like, he, he know? If someone been- done that to you, I'd be like, what the fuck? Who's that? Like, he looking at the road, door. he's just like, oh, standard, I've been knocked down gingered again. What is he, for like 20 years, he's just been a target of knocked down? If he's lived down. in that house for 20 years, I reckon people move out there and be like, no, nah, lived here Why is that years. house though? Why is that house Because it's right it? by, it's the last house, I think the last <coughs> houses get targeted for knocked down. Knock oh, down that's the point actually, yeah. Did yeah. you ever throw eggs at people's houses? Did you ever do that? Yeah, I would have, definitely. I yeah. can't recall myself doing it, but I must have. <laughs> We yeah, threw sausages at someone's house once. Sausages? I don't think I've done that one. Yeah, my mate was camp. Well, I say my mate. We were camping in my mate's garden. You know, we were kids, and it was actually we, we used to find it hilarious to go to do garden jumping, garden to garden to garden, oh, jumping. Fence yeah, in. because you're in there going, like, "Oh, this is a cool garden." Next, fence. My mate went on his own. We were like, "No, we're not going. We're not going that way." Like that looks like a hard fence. He's climbed over. They made loads of noise in the garden. Who is this? I know. Matt Steele. No, I don't. I don't want to say his name in case. I don't know, I just don't want to say oh, okay. oh. I don't know. Um, there's a noise, like you can hear like a light come on in the house and we've, because we were like having a little barbecue, I've pulled the sausage meat out of the, like the foreskin of the sausage, yeah. chucked it up at the window, like so it's gone dong. <laughs> They've looked out the window, my mate's just rummaging around in their garden. <laughs> <laughs> They come out. Yeah, but as a kid, you're like, fuck yeah, you're hell. shitting yourself. An adult's, yeah. an adult's gonna fuck me up. Yeah, I'm gonna get and... killed. You fucking yeah. shit yourself as a kid, isn't it? But as an adult, I'm saying, like, what? I'm, yeah. in your, I'm in your garden. <laughs> I'm doing a video. Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Java stop. Switching it on oh, then. That cracks me up. Oh, you wasn't on that overnight, was you? We ran off when the guy caught us in the ski centre. And Java's kicked off at the matey. Java's just walked off casually. like, And then, what? 
The thing yeah, is, no, Java is a big guy, so not a lot of people. Me, if a big fucking hench security guard comes up to me, I'm so small, but a big hench security guard comes up to Java, Java's overlooking them still. Yeah. And he right. doesn't give a fuck about anything. Yeah, no. I and he ain't that. scared of no one. So yeah, I do I do rate that. I miss the times of being a kid, knocked down gingering and hot garden hopping and I miss the times of overnight. I miss them times a lot. But I do think I went from a whole life, I feel like I had a long childhood. That went on. What do you mean? I went on, went on for at least 10, 15 years longer than everyone else's. <laughs> now, and it's it's lockdown that's made me think, fuck, like, who am I? I can't just live like earning this. I need to focus on things that I want. I think you, I don't know, you, things happen in lockdown that just made me think, right, well, I actually need to, I can't, this ain't, this is not a sustainable life. Like, I've earned money out of mm. this, but I can't be a dad paying for a house. <laughs> not that I am a dad, and not that I have to pay for a house. But I, I, if you know they're the things that I want, I can't be doing that. Thinking right, better go up and hit up an overnight <laughs> <laughs> mortgage is due the end of the month. <laughs> Any brands want to jump on the sponsor? Yeah, <laughs> and we used to say, didn't we? When when I was with that old girlfriend, uh, used to be like Al Random. She's got like a real professional job, and you're there hitting up overnights in swimming pools. Yeah, and stuff. she's there like a real like court, well like a high high like. Category in society's job, and then Lee's Lee, so I've got to go with another simple. Oh, imagine how random that'll be. Oh, yeah, the morning, your kid. Like, oh, what, where's daddy? So, where's daddy? Oh, he's been arrested again. <laughs> <laughs> he must have got caught. He went down the swimming pool with Java. Uncle Java. Uncle Java, yeah. But the kids, I think the kids would like it, wouldn't they? No, you'd end up like bringing up these like real naughty kids. Taking them on overnight. You know, like, have you ever watched Roman Atwood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's got, like his kids in the vlog and that. Imagine we were like progressed to a point of that, and people like knew the kids like, oh, little Jimmy, yeah, oh, that one when he was in the swimming pool as a, as a, as a brand new born baby. That was a classic. I love that one. What the, the video is taking my newborn on overnight? <laughs> yeah, down a water slide. A little pack attached here. <laughs> but they were good times. The overnights were honestly. I was in such a good place then, man. Like I was enjoying life to the max. Um, I think every like you say. But things change, um, but yeah, like our times, like we were talking about earlier, and it didn't seem like there was many bad times, like it would be like, we were constantly, we were being productive, so we were making videos, we were entertaining people, we were getting views, we were making money, we were having fun, we were having a laugh, every day we were progressing and doing something, and mate, like, two o'clock, like, honestly, that feeling of pulling off an overnight, like, people don't understand it, but, like, I'm going to straight up say it, like, some of the best nights of my entire life have been at 2 a.m. in a water park with you boys and, like, all the boys and fucking about and flying down bare ass, smashing into people, finding the light switch, finding the flume switch in water parks. Yeah, like, oh, I'll never forget. The feeling of finding splashes, the flume. Splashes when you get in there. You've got the, <coughs> the nerves of thinking... Like your brain goes through the motion, like am I even going to get in this place? So then you're getting in there, you're thinking, you've got the next bit, is the alarm going to go off once you're in there? No, the alarm's not going to go on. I remember splashes when I got the disco lights, no, <laughs> within within a minute, uh -huh. I've got the disco lights on and the flume come on. The like, flume, I just remember the, the, uh, the roar from the yeah, crowd of yeah. six of us, like, <laughs> oh my god! Oi, oh. I remember, oi, watching that video back, I watched it probably six months ago and it looks for anyone watching that, it looks fake. Oi, it looks so ridiculous. We've got a blow up thing in the water. We've got fucking disco lights booming everywhere. We've got music blasting. It just, the flume water all turned on it. Like, it just don't look real, but that was one of the, how did, did we get in? Like, wasn't that one of the ones where that little wooden hatch was open and we climbed through it or something? I always remember certain bits I can't remember, that. yeah. I remember certain bits because there was, there was a gap. There was bits of wood like that. <coughs> And then there was a gap. I always remember certain bits from videos. I remember me. Oh, yeah, yeah, me, yeah. The little me, gap me peeking the through, innit? I remember you, I'm sort of, where are you getting an angle from? Yeah, where are you getting an angle from? Because that, like, that was like, a, on, like an ongoing joke at the time, like an inside joke. Oh, where are you getting an angle from then? <laughs> Real ridiculous angles. But I don't, I remember what happened after, but I don't really remember the full story. What happened with them guys? Remember them guys trying to rob up the till and that? That was the next day. The next day. Where would we meet them? I just remember it happened. I don't remember anything about them or anything. I just remember. So previous to that, People thought that video was fake purely based on the fact that how can they get all the music and disco lights yeah, going? That was Obviously, it. I've, I've, so that's my thing, isn't it? Uh, and as for the blow up water thing, you know, hide out a bouncy castle, it's the same sort of Yeah, Lee sort of knew, you knew, yeah. Yeah, Java, and Java, you're in there, you're trying to have a bit of fun, you've got Java over the side. Oi! Oi! Yeah. How, Lee, come here, how'd you set this Lee, up? fuck's sake, come here! Come here, I want to get this thing set up. I'm like, oh, so I've had to stop what I'm doing. <laughs> and then sort Java out. 
But uh, yeah, no, it was funny. No, right. So who were them guys? I can't remember. Do you remember like next day or a couple of days later? When we realised it was very possible. Like really easy. Yeah. Like, my brain is like a goldfish. Like I actually remember this happening, but I don't remember how or what or. Like, we were parked up, and there was just some lads walking past. They watched the videos or what? They yeah, they knew us and was like, oh, how would you uh? get in there and then oh. I was like I'm not getting involved with people because yeah. we'd do it and we'd know the laws how yeah. if we did get nicked we're getting released the next day yeah we know each other like we know all of and us and we're not going to go around taking Robin. a chocolate bar because you know yeah. the second you're in there you're trespassing anyway which is a civil matter but the second you take it's a Mars bar you're thieving you're burglary it's not a, it's yeah. not theft it's burglary because yeah. you're in a bit and that's just, you know sounds serious doesn't it but we knew all them little rules you know don't touch stuff but anyone else in there just seemed to think. I think a lot of people think this about us, like we're yeah. absolute nutters. Yeah, I, swear, I, I swear I've had DMs saying, all right, boy, I'm going to come and rob a bank. You interested yeah. in getting involved? <laughs> I've had the same. I've had some proper naughty ones. And then yeah. I bumped into some serious guys about a year ago. It was like full, like a proper job, like wanted me to get involved in a proper robbery. It was like, yeah, I swear <laughs> like people think we're absolute, like, ruthless fuckers. Like, yeah. all right, mate, we're going to go and cut a load of cable out of network rail. Are you interested yeah, in getting involved? Interested. Go off on it, 380 kilos, four tonnes in there, mate. Yeah, get involved, help us. Like, they think we're, like, we're well naughty when I'm really, really not. Sort of, the overnights was a grey area in the law, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was like knew. a loophole, wasn't it? And at the time, it was... They were fun, and when the fact that you knew you could <coughs> record them and earn money as a result of being there, is, is, that made it more of a piss take, didn't it? Yeah, Because some the hater comments like, oh, these need to get a job, and then I just kind of reply, no, 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 this is my job, if I don't do overnight challenges, I'm, I don't I can't get paid. Pay, I can't pay the mortgage. <laughs> I can't pay the finance, I'm a Ford Focus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we'd piss people off even more, wouldn't Yeah, nah. Lee, Lee loves um, winding people up. Like a classic from Lee is on the Facebook page, haters. And I done it the other day. I love this one. This is a classic. Someone messages you a pure hate message, abuse, and you message back, oh, "Hello, this is an automated response. Please email at hello at Disco Boy for bookings for bookings and inquiries. Yeah, for birthday shoutouts, whatever. Please, they're like, I literally, I send it abuse, and he's yeah, trying send it for abuse bookings and, and business. Please email. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, that's not the idea. I did that the other day. Someone sent me a proper hate message, and I was like, I, I literally sent that thing, and he replied, like, piss take or yeah, something. Yeah, you think they'd look at it and just be like, Yeah, fuming. But yeah, basically, these guys, we met these guys, I fuck, can't remember how, and I remember me and Lee were like, Well, I was outright like, Nah, I'm not going in there. I think Ricky and Scotty went in there. I can't remember, was it Ricky and Scotty? I think Ricky, Scotty, and Dan went in with these guys. I was like, straight from the get go, like, I'm not doing it with people I don't know. These guys were like dodgy anyway. I just remember them being like a bit dodgy and I was like, look, I don't want to be involved here. I've got bad vibes. I'm like, look, let's not do it. Me and Lee never went in. We stayed in that camper, innit? That big the Winnebago. Big oh, the funny thing about that actual story went off <laughs> our videos. The Daily Mail wrote, uh, when the security turned out, uh, the YouTubers, however they worded it, fled the venue and uh, <laughs> got, got away in a camper van. <laughs> Fled the van, but the way they worded it, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it was like we got like we got into escape, like yeah, ran away, and got the venue and fled the venue in a camper in van. In a camper van, yeah, like not a fast car in a camper van. But next day, this all happened. These guys went in. We could hear them from down the road. Do you remember that, that song? What's the song that reminds you of that event? That place. Oh, I can't do, 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 yeah, do, what is the song? Do, do. What's uh, the song? I predict an earthquake. Yeah, Benny, I predict an earthquake. Benny Benassi remix of Earthquake. <laughs> do, do, yeah, that was it. Oi, really. Oi. I just remember it like because there's houses all on, on the left hand side and we were parked like quite far down in it like we weren't parked right outside like we were parked a bit down there was quite a few houses in between us and the the place and we could just wait two o'clock in the morning we could, well, I don't know what time it was but like late we could just hear that song that must have, they, the neighbours must have thought fucking hell they're doing late night pool parties two nights in a row now <laughs> it's probably why they didn't phone the police they're, like, they're not going to think oh someone's got in there and got the stuff going they'd yeah. be like oh that's, staff must be having a party yeah because they surely wouldn't be like oh it, someone's robbing the gaff because no one would put that right. music on yeah probably, and they probably looked out wouldn't they? oh no no it's all fine it's, it's just the staff and then we can see him going down the flume <laughs> We could see Daniel Jarvis. <laughs> no, but oi, we could hear it from down the road and we could fucking see the lights. The place was lit up like a Christmas tree. We could hear all the lights. Next minute, 
Java nuts come running out. The boys that they took in have tried robbing the gaff, like sort of robbing the cafe. Or didn't they try robbing the tills or something? <laughs> I swear. I swear Java kicked off at one of them because he tried, or like Java proper kicked off at one of them and then they all left because the mateys tried robbing the till. Some random mateys tried robbing the till. And oh yeah, I just got bad vibes from that. And that's why I've never done it overnights with randomers. And yeah, people thought that was something. I remember taking one of, like a guy, a friend of a friend in Southampton. He was sound back in the day. He used to do free running and that. We took him to a London go-kart place. He's come out with a load of drinks from the cafe. <laughs> He's come out with fucking, yeah, I've you were there. Yeah, you got boys, I've just found these. We're like, fuck's sake. Put them out. I remember Java kicking off. He's like, fucking put them back. <laughs> and he actually um, ended up going to prison for something else. Like, he's in prison now, you know that. Is it? Yeah, fuck, he got into some bad shit. But yeah, fucking, mate, mental times. But yeah, we never took nothing. We never stole nothing. That one more we about. We just had fun. It was a little loophole. And they were some of the best nights of my life. They were and fucking you, sick. You can't actually them. do them now, can you? Like, I, can't I think a lot of people do, do that. Some people like, <coughs> of your fan base know you can't, but a lot of people are. A lot of people don't, yeah. Like 99%. I get messages every single day. I get people on the streets, you need to do overnights again. You need to bring them back, do them. And then I get, mate, literally multiple times per day on Insta when I check my DMs. Every day, without fail, someone recommending somewhere to go or something mm. to do. Like, lot, not a lot of people know, but yeah, basically I have. A criminal behaviour order, which is like an ASBO, and that stops me from trespassing. If I break that, I basically go to prison. So, yeah. And I think you've changed. Would you even want to do them now? Uh, I don't know. I'll, I wouldn't do them as much. I wouldn't mind doing like one or two. You know, I don't know. I say that. The overnights. I might, I, I pro- not maybe not at the level I was, but I wouldn't mind doing them. Like, if I could a do them more, like same. a grand. Say, like when the CBO's order, like a grand. <laughs> A great, like a special occasion, like Jarvo's birthday or something. <laughs> Jarvo's birthday, it's Please turn up, cake and that. Yeah, I think happy birthday. I wouldn't do it. I think I'm part, I think <coughs> you're not the same person you was. Like when you look at my videos, a lot of people, like, oh, they sort of know you for that particular thing. And a lot of mine is like the discos in a supermarket. Where, and I think that you're was like not, six years ago. You're not that person anymore. Yeah, and I look back at some of the stuff I've done, and I think I just wouldn't do that now wouldn't have the bottle to, you're changing like you're not the same person you was six months ago let alone six years ago four years ago two years and, and you probably find the same you just you, you've got to constantly evolve all the time it's not that you've yeah. got you are you are evolving all the time like there's people that watching that's watching this now that have been here for like five six this channel is actually about 10 years old i think but yeah we're, we're constantly evolving and it, you can't just carry on doing the same thing your whole <coughs> life can you that'd be ridiculous overnights at 65 years old well that would be good wouldn't it i'm not gonna lie like overnights i wouldn't mind doing the climbing stuff i'm over not for any other reason i'm just bored of it like rinsed it done it over it overnights I probably wouldn't do it at the level i was doing back then I didn't get bored of them, that's not something I got bored of. I got bored of the climbing, the overnights I never got bored of, I just got stopped doing them. I actually fucking love them. When I got banned from doing them, I miss them so much. So I probably would do them, but the climbing and the other stuff, the naughty stuff, like, I don't know, man, I don't know how I lived through them days. Like, I was getting arrested every other day, I was fucking in court, I had shitloads of court cases on me, I was fucking not sleeping, I was stressing, I was... I don't know, I don't know how I did it, to be fair. I don't think it's a healthy lifestyle, um, but I had a lot of fun, and created a lot of mad memories doing it um i did enjoy it a lot but i think yeah evolving like you have to constantly the, the thing society teaches us yeah, is you go to school you go to college you go you get a job you get one job and then you stay at that job for the rest of your life like society's way is right lee you become a plumber and then you work up at that job so you can get 30 grand a year 40 grand a year 50 grand a year and you do that exact same job for the rest of your life mate None of us are fucking made to do that. Even YouTube, like, I've done YouTube for so long and I still still do enjoy it now and I, I want to make videos. But, like, you would evolve, man. Like, I, people say to me, like, if I say oh, I don't really like climbing anymore, they're like, how oh, fuck, you're so good at it. But, like, you've made all these things, you've made a name for yourself. It's like, we evolve, man. Like, you're not made to do the same thing forever. And that's what I think's fucked about society. Like, people leave school and they do the same job and they do it forever. And I don't, mate, the, it could be the best job in the world. YouTube is technically the best job in the world. It's the sickest job in the world. But, like, I don't want to do it forever, you know? Like, I want to adapt. I want to be one of them people. When I get to fucking 70 years old, look back and look like you. I think you've done a lot of this. Like, you are a man that have done, has done many of different things. And I want to be like that. I want to be like a person that's 
oh yeah, I went to fucking Bali and I lived in Bali. I done personal training. I fucking oh, I done yeah. plumbing. I done fucking YouTube. I done this. I done that. I done businesses. Like I want to just do and whatever's making me, whatever is driving me at this time. Like right now, I've lost that sort of love for YouTube. Like I used to have. I still enjoy making videos, but. I've lost that love that I used to have because I'm evolving. And I think what what would people say at a funeral? He was a YouTuber. Went into imagine not if I'd just done supermarket videos <coughs> every week. Yeah, for the rest he of your life. In, he built a career going in Asda and Tesco's, jumping on the checkouts, <laughs> and that's what he done. That's all he done. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's good to just. It's good to mix it yeah, up. Yeah, I've done a few things. Like, I've tried. Can. I've tried going back to plumbing recently. I've been doing a bit of soul searching, thinking like, who am I, what do I want? And, and lockdown made me think this. Lockdown really changed me as a person. Really made me question myself and, and what I want. Like my whole life since 14 has involved entertainment. And when that adrenaline and, and uh, what's all the word? What's all that thing? The dopamine rushes and the serotonin. serotonin and dopamine. When that went from gigs, because I would buzz off these gigs. Like certain songs you'd play and you get a mix and you feel this like rush through your brain. And it's like a little mix you've done or, or something that come on. And it's, I didn't realise it's releasing all these chemicals. And I ask some people about it, they don't know what I'm on about. I think you're fucking crazy. Like, what's this guy talking about? So I'm getting these natural mad rushes and I'm always on a high. And people are like, what drugs are you on? And I'm not knowing, I didn't really look into this till lockdown, that the overnights buzzing my absolute tits off. Was it Knowing drug? that, you do the overnight, you're having the best time ever, you've made a video of it, you edit the video, you watch that back, you show people, like, you're buzzing from the video because you're like, I'm going to put this on the internet and the fans on the YouTube are going to fucking love it because I love looking at it, that's a memory of my friends and if they like the last one, they're going to fucking like this one, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So all these buzzes, yeah, because there were certain nights I wouldn't do because if I got arrested and it went and you can you stay in a police cell for 24 hours, I didn't want to ruin the gig, so I'd never do it on the nights. Yeah, where I that remember could that. Happen. I remember that. He's like, "Oh, I can't come tonight because I've got a gig tomorrow night. Yeah. I can't afford to get arrested tonight." Yeah, and yeah, I, remember it, I mean, it wasn't. I didn't get arrested loads, and I'm pleased I haven't got any outstanding court cases and shit. Now I'm done with that. Like that was annoying. That was fucking annoying. Not even stressful. People say was it stressful? I guess it was in a way, but like more just fucking annoying. Yeah, yeah, no. Like knowing you've got to go to court this day, like, oh, I can't go to fucking, can't go on a trip this week, or I've got to be back because I got caught for some bullshit. Yeah, no, it was all, yeah, it was a nightmare. What else was I going to say? Something along them lines. Like dopamine, like levels, highs. You're talking about, like, you were on such a high, other people didn't realise, like, no, don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, something I was going to say about court and to do with that. I can't, I can't think what I was going to say now. But yeah, I'm talking about when I last got arrested. Like, I touch wood. Mm. I don't think I've been arrested since 2018. Which seems like I'm, I mean I'm proud of that. A lot of people be like, well, "Fucking well done, mate." <laughs> yeah, been well arrested done. since 2018. I've lived my whole fucking life. I haven't been arrested. <laughs> most <laughs> people, to be proud yeah, of, but, most people. But never been to not be arrested for that long, I'd hate it now. Honestly, Red one of. of I'm guessing 99% of people watching this actually Lee's got a bit of a me and Lee got a bit of a um, what's the word anti anti establishment anti establishment demographic I like to say a strong anti establishment man dem audience man dem audience yeah I that's think, basically I it. think it's so, about 7% females on here yeah so may, maybe go on boy them, de that demographic maybe like 80% of you haven't been arrested I don't know drop me have you been arrested have you been arrested you before um, if so what, is, <laughs> what was your experience did you get Ginster's pasties um, there was a time when I got arrested and I was getting that sick of the uh, foul microwave meal companies. The oh, microwave meals, don't, I remember don't, this. they don't even have to be put like, in a fridge. It says yeah. store on the box, it says store in a cool, dry place. Honestly, horrible. I remember you tweeting them, like you found the company of the thing. Yeah, like, I ripped a bit of cardboard. Them abuse. I ripped, yeah, I ripped, I ripped the uh, name of the company off the cardboard thing. They literally just give you the microwave meal in the box and then you tear the top open. Yeah, tweeted the company, like, sick of being arrested and have to put up with your foul, horrible microwave meals. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> that many uh, horrible things in and yeah, stabilizers. Ingredient list ingredients list like... Don't even have to be put in a fridge. What are you putting in that? This stuff ain't even yeah, fit for, for my humans, dog. Man. <laughs> I honestly, the worst food on earth, not even that, the worst experience. Like, for, as I was saying, for people that have not been arrested, keep it that way. It's a fucking horrible experience. Like, Mate, just getting chucked in that cell 
and especially if it's in the daytime if you're at night and you can sleep a little bit it's not so bad i've done quite a few 24 hours which are fucking killers mate it's mentally exhausting like 24 hours in that cell will fuck your head up and i always used to come out and i remember for like two days after i'd be fucked head, like angry and pissed off and just sad like it would fuck my mental state up for days man and i remember like me and Ricky once in Bristol got arrested, yeah. We slept, we went and climbed something, we got arrested. So we had already slept, we stayed up, yeah, 24 hours in a cell, got out, literally got out, slept at our mate's house, went in the morning, climbed something, arrested again. And I remember that just fucked me, man. Me and Ricky, like that killed us. That ripped us off, that was a fucking. Yeah, it's, it's like isolation. Experience. Javo says it's worse than prison. Yeah, yeah, because you're on your own, you're locked in. Yeah, Javo says, like, actual prison is better than the cell. And honestly, it's just like, you get that shit food. They tr talk to you like you're some sort of fucking animal. It's just, you don't know what the fuck is happening when you get oh, out of there. It's you know, just a horrible experience. Oh, do you know the shit. best noise to hear? Anyone, the keys. Oh, anyone, anyone, anyone who's been arrested. Been arrested. <laughs> oh, th this excites you. Oh, yeah. yeah, but the problem is, 99% no, you know, oh, is... It goes straight past yeah, yourself. Goes straight like, past you don't you. care, you just want to talk to anyone. But then you hear oh, them keys and instantly, yeah, you're like... That's they're me, coming, they're Oi. For me. and then, for me. Do, 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 and then they walk past, and then yeah. you get that about a hundred times before they actually come to your cell, and it is the most, it is the most depressing thing in, on earth. Like you're like your only little <laughs> glimmer of hope, or well, you know it, you know it. So you're like, oh, finally, and then straight past you hear them open someone else's cell, you're like fuck, and then yeah, mate. I, I honestly, I'm happy. I don't ever want to get arrested again in my fucking life. If if I do. I'm going to prison because I'm not getting arrested for stupid little shit anymore. <laughs> if, yeah. if I do, it's a big serious crime and I'm going to jail. But prison, chuck me in prison, but not themselves. They're fucking horrible, man. They're yeah, horrible I, I got reminded for three days for wearing the police outfits. Javo got released, and I, I, I see him get released because he went past my cell. So I'm like, oh, sweet, I'm getting out of here soon. Next thing you know, they served me papers to go to court and said I'm remanded. Well, but like, Java got out. Yeah, I'm like, and they thought it was some sort of ringleader operation. Oh, I remember so hearing this, yeah. I'm like, really? That. How do you think this is happening? But I don't know, that pissed me off. But it's just the, the toilet as well. Like, there's a couple of times I'm on the toilet and they're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're like, having a yeah, shit. <laughs> it's just well, like, it's just. Uh, what's the word? Oh, the just, thing is, as well, it's, degrading, not, like, isn't it? it's like, not like it's hidden, so it's like. I'm having a piss and it's not like my dick's facing the back wall. When you're having a piss, the door's right next to you and then they open, you've just got your dick out and having a piss. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just, it's degrading, man. It's the more the fact of just getting your freedom stripped away from you and you're just stuck yeah. in this little box, man. And it's, you can't see some, like most of them have got like this fake window, that, like the light and you know that, like, is not actual real lighting or something. I can't remember who was telling me that. So like, you don't know if it's daytime, you don't know if it's nighttime. It's just fucking. The lighting's weird. I yeah, bought, I bought an LED light for my camper van recently, and, and it had the weird light on that, it. Yeah. And it, I thought oh, I'm not putting this in the thingy. Cause weird it prison me of the vibes. Cell. Yeah. And it's got that weird humming, similar to what's on now. Can you hear that? The fridge. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's just dead silence. It's just you, your own thoughts, and that fucking annoying humming, and the odd occasional keys. Or you get this unlucky time, and you've got an absolute fucking crackhead in the door next Obviously, to you, bam, 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 kicking bam, shit out of the door. Bam, Fuck bam, you, God! Rah, boom, booting. Oi, I've had it before all night. Honestly, you just want to. Honestly, you've had a gun. Boom, ended. Like it is fucking. Oi, did you, you, did you ever get in there and make out your uh, not make out? I think when they look on the you know the screens because I had this vision they've got a screen of all the cells yeah no they but do been, they do so I've been looking oh look oh, Alistair's doing a workout oh yeah 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 I, I used to do like proper little hip workouts yeah like I'd do like squat jumps and that in my boxers yeah because I didn't want to get all my wait yeah you go in with clothes yeah I didn't want to get all my clothes sweaty so I'd go in my boxers and they, I could just picture them yeah because I've seen the screens when you walk past like the sergeant thing you can see the screen they've got like a massive screen with all the people on them yeah and they can get like one person up bigger oh yeah Alistair's doing fucking jumping jacks again oh, do you remember the joke we had like oh, if they're looking on the screen oh, so all of us like doing something so like 10 men get arrested at once and like Alistair 22 arrested for climbing the crane <laughs> they look at his screen they do it they look at your screen yeah, and then, <laughs> oh, what's, what's, our whole, what's, Paul? What's, what's Paul up to? He's been arrested for domestic violence. <laughs> yeah, what's, like yoga pose yeah what's, what's Malcolm up to? He's been arrested for uh, armed robbery. 
But just, we're, we're, we're fucking, we, we've got a lively lot in tonight. <laughs> Keep asking for shitloads of water. Oh yeah, that was another thing. They give you little cups of water like this big. And when, oh yeah, honest, I've done one hit workout. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> sweating my bollocks off. Yeah, absolutely sweating my bollocks off. And it's like I had to keep asking for water. Um, I've done a backflip in one Lee. I just like to picture them looking at the screen, seeing that like a backflip. Well, I found Be like a, what the fuck. One of them, I found a place where I could sort of hide against the wall, like, and they come to the cell thinking like, I must have thought, where is? Oh, you're there. Oh yeah. Because they couldn't like, see yeah, me on yeah, the camera. Yeah. I was just doing. Weird shit, but you, your mind goes insane. Your mind goes insane, man. <sighs> what else? Good. Right, moving on from that. There you go. Moving That's enough police prison, cell talk. Prison stories. Um, so your YouTube, like, obviously you're restricted. You've got your second, your vlog channel running. Yep. And uh, how, how's that going for you? Like, where do you want to take that? Honestly, this is my... I'm just following my heart at the moment. I'm following sort of what I want to do. I was in a pretty, pretty comfortable position. Obviously, I built my main channel to 3 million subscribers. It got demonetized, which kind of fucked me because I could, I'd have a Lambo parked outside at the moment if I didn't want, wouldn't want demonetized. Yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking, but is what it is, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I set up a paid subscription website. I got it to a point I was very fucking comfortable. I didn't have to do a lot of work. I got it to a point I, I worked fucking hard on it in the beginning, um, and I was passionate about it for the first year, year and a half, um, and then lost the passion for it. Um, but kept it running, kept making the videos, had loads of videos banked up before COVID. I went traveling for three months, banked shit loads of videos up. And I could basically just sit back and chill and do fuck all. And I had a comfortable amount of money coming into my bank every month. But I was just losing my head, got uh, got comfortable, wasn't following my fucking dream, like what felt right inside me. I wasn't following what I wanted to do. So I'd give up the website, it was just bringing me too much stress, um, dealing with it, having to, having to fucking create these videos that wasn't like sparking me inside and all I wanted to do was create videos for the second chat I wanted to create basically when I first started YouTube I liked the idea of like traveling doing fun shit doing adventure stuff skydiving fucking about having fun and that's what the second channel is about it's called Ali Law's life so it's more about my life more than fucking mad shit um, and yes yeah, so I give up the website that was very comfortable could have kept doing that and I would have been comfortable but I was in my comfort zone for too long so I'd completely give that up my income went from but that basically that was my main income it went from that's like basically i quit my job i quit a yeah, very yeah. high paying job um that was very comfortable like a high paying job imagine a fucking high paying 100k a year job that i had to go into the office once a week equivalently i yeah. quit that because i was so comfortable and i went from 100k a year job year a job 100k a year job is nothing so i basically quit that um and yeah i just want to make videos for the second channel fuck about on that travel around have fun create things that actually because i've created a few videos this month and last month and i've enjoyed making them cool things that just... yeah cool things adventuring fucking going to meet a guy with a tank going to meet my mate dylan watching him base jump going exploring some caves like that's what i want to do man i want to travel around and fucking cool little vids you know, yeah not necessarily cool little... going viral but it's just a you enjoy it and I think that's and the main thing things. like I went for a stage of thinking I'm, I'm just gonna go back to plumbing I got my COS card in plumbing went back I was there three days literally hating life uh, that was really good pay and I, I could sit there and I could live comfortably doing that but it was destroying me inside destroying think, you inside yeah I think this this ain't me I want, I want more like I'm not I remember when I quit plumbing originally, it's because I liked entertainment, I liked to be out and talking, I'm just thinking, I can you've do like this, gone I around in a loop. Plumbing. Yeah, you've but gone around in a loop. I'm the Bishop of Canterbury's and the Archbishop's bathrooms back Shout out to Justin Welby. Yeah, like, I was topping my game at it, but I've, I kind of thought, like, I've been there, I've done that. I, not that it's a step backwards, like, I've got it to fall back on if I ever want it, but I just this thought, this, this, this isn't me, I've yeah. experienced another life, and... This is like going back if I was on my ass and thought, fuck, I'm, I'm going to have to do this to pay rent. I'll do it, but I'm thinking I'm not in that situation. This is not what you want to do. This like, is not what I want to do. Yeah. I, I'm destined for like, bigger things that I want to do, and what am I doing? Mm -hmm. But it took doing the COS car, paying, I can't remember what I paid for it, but... Yeah, I remember, this was a couple of months ago, wasn't it? Because, yeah, you were convinced, you were like, oh, I think this is what I need to do, just go back to a normal job, and then you've done it. And I remember ringing you when you was on that site, and them guys were in the background, like, joking about something. They were like, ooh, hee, hee, hee. I can't remember what they were fucking talking about. Like, I, I can't I don't remember. think... 
I they think, thought you were sneaking in or something, I know. Yeah, I, do I, don't, I don't think I'm like, I think these sight people, I don't think I'm a sight boy. Like, they're all like lads. Oh, yeah, like football, football, lads, football. Yeah. Like, I've got no interest in football. And yeah, you know, don't fit in. They're not your type of people. I don't think I'm some sort of nutcase lad. I think people think I'd be real loud and lair in real life and like a proper... Yeah, the opposite. And I just think I'm more, I think I'm quite chilled, really. But... but I think the vi the videos portray he's a fucking nut. Yeah, man, like kind of thing. I think it can go. Yeah, it's weird, like how everyone perceives everyone different. But like our vids, definitely people think the same about me. I'm the fucking complete opposite. But like, yeah, people think well, you especially with like the party stuff and the thing. But yeah, you're not people. People, I know because you, you you said before like people come up to you like you want some gear, do gear and that. But like, yeah, like the messages come to my house, I can pay you all the gear you want. Yeah, yeah it's kind like, of like I'm thinking, fucking give off that image, but yeah, you don't like. It ain't me. Yeah, but no. I think you you've shown in your videos actually like compared with some people that have done overnight. <coughs> Like when shit's gone wrong or if someone's really upset, you're like, oh, sorry, man, blah, blah, you see, Yeah. Which I think that was part of your success. I think part of your success is people love your laugh. <laughs> I think that, that shines through on the videos. It's, it's like, addictive. Yeah. Because when I'm running, like, I'm silent. Like, so that's no, that's not interesting footage. I'm just like, fuck, get out of here. Shit, fuck. It always cracked me up. And you're just like, fucking, I can't, well, I can't, yeah, I'm not going to try and do like, Yeah, you're laughing your head off running yeah, away. Yeah, people did love that. I, I don't know, yeah. I think that's a good part. And the consistency. Obviously, you, you got on it and you stay consistent. Whereas, and you, did, you said that before, didn't you? Like, you've done YouTube. You wanted to do it, didn't you? Yeah, like, at the time. So that's what I'm saying about, like, the website. Like, I got into YouTube and wanted to do YouTube because of the freedom and I fucking loved the idea of it and I didn't want to work a job that made me unhappy. I didn't want to make a job but like it, it got to that point, and not through YouTube but like I'd done that period in my life. I'd done that, the climbing, the running away from the police and the overnights and like, I had fun doing that and I fucking loved it. Got to a point, created my website, loved it still, got to a point where I didn't love it anymore. And at that point when I didn't love it anymore, I should have stepped back then, but you get comfortable. Like, it's very hard, it's very easy to get comfortable when society teaches you, and obviously money, financial situations, you're very comfortable. But, like, the more you do something that makes you unhappy, the more you just fucking lose yourself. So, I was doing something that originally I got into to be free, have freedom and do something I enjoyed and then I got to a point that didn't enjoy that anymore but I was continuing doing it and then I, I questioned myself and I was like I'm literally doing and I wanted to quit it for ages I'm like I'm literally doing what the opposite of what I originally got into this for yeah like it's so, like a relationship that's going amazing yeah you get comfortable and then then you're unhappy and you think I can't do this anymore but you're comfortable a lot of yeah, people, yeah, yeah. Lot a lot of, of people yeah, stay... How can, how can I walk away from this? Because I'm comfortable. And that's literally everything I'm against. It's the opposite to my mindset. But I was like, wasn't practicing what I was preaching. I got comfortable financially. Now, giving up the website was very fucking hard because it's like my main income. It's like my job. But I knew deep down... I didn't fucking hate it, hate it. But I knew deep down it wasn't inspiring me. It wasn't giving me a fucking fire inside out of get out of bed. Mate, back in the day, you know me, like the YouTube videos, I wasn't sleeping for days. I fucking loved it, man. Mm. I loved making the videos. I loved hearing the reactions. I loved meeting people in the streets. I loved the YouTube growing. I loved fucking making the videos. I loved everything about it, yeah? I, I don't have that passion anymore. Like, I don't have that drive inside me to create them videos. I still have a drive inside me to create videos, but just not them type of videos. I, I rinsed it. I'd done it. I'd done that chapter of my life. And I'll outgrow it, and then it doesn't give me the same fucking enjoyment that it used to do. So mm. now, now I've moved on from that. But the same yeah, as you, you've like got, you've got to revolve. I think recently, like I've done something stupid with the speedo on uh, Tyrone Tyrone's live. But like, I was really nervous in that, and it wasn't me. But I was like, I'll do it. I'll what did you do? Set a bouncy castle up in Tesco. Oh, Tesco, yeah, yeah. And it, it kind of wasn't me. I knew that a, a few people was pissed off. But oh, I thought, well, oh, you fuck it, I'll do it, like, I'll do it, I'll just fucking do it, like, t uh, speed, I really wanted to do it, and I was like, I'll just, I, I mean, admittedly, I, like, you sort of fight with your own brain, like, I did come up with the idea, and then once I told speed, I was like, we've got to make that happen, we've got to make that happen, so I'm like, fuck it, fuck what it, what happened, you pissed worker, I haven't the seen The worker it. was fuming, he was actually, I think the manager was called Lee, but he was fuming with this bouncy castle set up, and I hate it now, when you've pissed people off, like, yeah. I don't know what he's going through, and I don't know yeah, why he's taking offence to a bouncy castle set up in Tesco's, but, he weren't happy about it, and I think, yeah. fuck, I've ruined his... Yeah, you could have ruined his day. I always thought about that. Um, like, the, Although the videos, and like, Lee ain't a bad person, I ain't a bad person, like, deep down we mean well, and like, my videos are always tried to be good, I always 
I didn't want to piss people off. I didn't want to make people angry. Like the police maybe chase us and we'd have a laugh of it. But like deep down, like you say, like if someone's really pissed off, I'd try and calm the situation. I'm like, sorry, mate. But we once had it in London and we pissed off this like African security guard. This was like 2018. Um, and it was like as the videos were popping off, so like right at the beginning, as my channel was blowing, we got caught by this African security guard. He was so emotional, yeah? Like crying, basically. A grown ass man. I was chatting to him one to one whilst we were waiting for the police, like in this office. He's basically fucking crying, mate, like telling me how bad of a person I was, yeah? And telling me that they're all gonna lose their jobs. Um, all the security are gonna lose their jobs. And mate, it hit me differently inside. And I was, this was literally as my channel was fucking blowing up. As the success was going, and in my head, I was like to the boys, and afterwards, I was like, boys, I can't fucking do this anymore. Like, I'm literally quitting this whole thing. I can't climb, I can't run away from security yet. And I was like prepared to quit, and was gonna quit, convinced that this man's lost his job and shit. And then, like a week later, he hadn't. He had a week lost later, his... you received your first paycheck from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> week later, the AdSense come in, and I realised it was fucking stupid. No, like a week later, the boys seen him. The boys got like, I stopped climbing for like a week or whatever and like was just debating life obviously i had a predicament i was like i'm really fucking loving this but like, i felt so fucking bad and then alex was basically telling me that this guy's a bullshitter and none of them lost his jobs and he was he was like a head security guard um but yeah like i never wanted to piss mate i never wanted to do that. that's not why i done this i didn't want to fucking wind people up and like like you say people going about like these people are just working on honest living to pay for their fucking pay their families you know what i mean put food oh. on their table but like i never I never intended, I was just trying to entertain myself and fucking make YouTube videos and mm. entertain people. But yeah, it's a bad feeling when you piss a person off. If you piss a copper off, it ain't so bad. I feel like it's, it's not the same. But like when you piss a genuine person off and you see, like you say, you went into Tesco and you've, for whatever reason, whether it be his personal issues of pissing him off or make, he's an angry person inside, like you have somehow affected his day and he's just chilling, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like it's uh, weird it makes how you people, bad, like, I know. it's weird how pe people are different, like, how people react is how they react. Like, if I crash my car, I couldn't care. And in fact, I crashed my car recently, and it could have been, it was quite a hardcore yeah, crash. Yeah, bad. I remember laughing, yeah. seeing it happen, thinking, yeah. fucking it. Wait, I what I found more funny is the fact that the person would have heard it outside the house, and I was just laughing, thinking, in fact, they're gonna run down, thinking, shit, a car's crashed big time, come down the house to see the car skiddly skiddaddling off up the road with two flat tyres. <laughs> Bring your fucking hanging around. Is he, is he drunk? <laughs> Skidaddling up the road. Is he Car drunk? smoking up the road, thinking, I'm just like, fuck that, get out of here. Oh, I, I had the same thing was with the boys in S no, Amsterdam or Slovenia. Well, no, Slovenia. It was going through after Amsterdam. And we were driving, and it hit like a roundabout, and it was wet, and it slid out, hit a fucking curb, literally got airtime. We come off the ground. Elliot cracks on. You need to get Elliot on this podcast to talk about this story. The way he explains it, it's fucking brilliant. But anyway, car's in the middle of this ditch, yeah, absolutely fucking smoking out the bonnet. Flat tyre, popped one of the tyres. This guy comes past, like this local Slovenian guy comes past. He's like, literally pulls up next to us. It's about two o'clock in the morning. I love my two o'clock in the mornings. I just prefer to everything as two o'clock in the morning. But it was very late at night. He pulls up, he's like, are you drink driving? Are you drunk? I was like, nah, man. He went, okay, good, because if he was, I'd have to call the police. And then he drove off, and we're just like in the middle. Like, I was like, well. Are you not going to help? Yeah, you're not going to help. He just fucked off and left us, but it's the same sort of thing. And we just like pushed the car up the hill, fucking in the morning. Actually, some American guy at some local little garage, we got chatting to him. He fixed the tire for free. Oh, and really? Was, yeah, he's just like, I went to pay him, and he was like, nah, nah, boys, because we had a chat with him. He's like, you can have that one for free. Good luck on your journeys. But yeah, same sort of thing. We had a pretty bad crash. But yeah. I know what you mean, like, serious situation to some people it would ruin their fucking yeah, year and they freak crash, out. Blah, blah, yeah, like, it's like, you just laugh about it. I was just it. like, it's a piece of metal, I'm still alive. I'm still alive, yeah. I, had a sure. well, I don't know how old I was, I had a well nice Beamer, crashed it big time, skid out, skidded out on ice. When? Years ago now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, crashed, in fact, Hit, hit black ice, some water paid out because I knew my rules on plumbing and they had a duty of care to not leak. If they knew that water main was leaking in the road, they had a duty of care to make sure that was fixed. They left it leaking. Oh, I had proof shit. from the neighbours that they'd been around and they put barriers around the leak yeah. but left the leak going. They had a duty, ah. So the leak went down the hill bit and right across the road. So I drove on in a rear wheel drive car, span out of control and hit a car that was already in the field upside down. I was very confused. Wait, what? Another car already spun out? Yeah, but that was a drink driver and he'd run off. 
What, that night? Yeah. <laughs> what I'm confused. Imagine I crash quite hardcore, like... And boom, then boom. there's another car, but no I'm thinking, person. I'm, I've run over to it, like, oh, God, God, it's upside down. Because I'm confused. <laughs> My car's going everywhere. I'm like, what am I going to see? Well, like, did you roll? Did your car roll? My car didn't roll. My car stayed upright. And then... I've, yeah, I've gone over to it and there's no one in it and the light's just on. I'm like, what the f this is weird. My mate was asleep in the car. My, my mate was drunk asleep in the car. <laughs> Your mate's fallen asleep through the car crash. He did wake up a bit. He's like, bashed it. But <laughs> the thing is, I left him in the car. Uh, Gav. It? I don't think you met him. But, <laughs> what was um, going on here? The car, I knew the car was not going to suddenly catch on fire because that's like what happens in films. And if I did think that, I wouldn't have left him there anyway. Gav just, blows just, up in Gav the car. Gav was asleep. I was like, Gav, Gav, you're right. He's good. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Gav's just had a car crash. Does Gav know to this day that he had a car crash? Is he yeah, well, anyway, the police all turned. The police skidded in, crashed up the bank a bit in their <laughs> own car. You know, police like come in. Like, <clears throat> yeah. They went up the bank and crashed. Like a little bit. What, because of the eyes? Yeah, because they they oh, just okay. like, they think it's just divvy drivers, but yeah. I'm like, they didn't know the whole road. I did tell them, I said, this road is ridiculously like an ice rink. Yeah. But, yeah, they come in, they speed in, didn't they, and stopped. Yeah. But they stopped and skidded and went up the bank a bit. But, yeah, I was like, this has happened, blah, blah, blah. They're like, what's that car about? They, they caught the guy. The guy had run, like, was like four miles down the road. Yeah. But, like, right, they're talking. They're like, oh, right, went over to the car. They shone it at the car. I was like, someone in it? Yeah, yeah. They looked at me like, what do you mean left him in it? I'm like, he's really drunk. The, car ain't, the car's fine. Like, They almost looked at me like I'm a bit irresponsible. I'm like, he hasn't got a jacket. He's just chilling there. Yeah. Like It's like 15 metres in a field that way. It's just, And then Gav's just like coming over to the car like drunk. Like. Gav's the most confused man on earth after that one. So like, what the fuck has happened here? But people were like, oh, I bet you wish you were in your van. I'm like, not really, because I just walked out of a... Yeah, car yeah, crash, materialistic like, absolutely fine. Yeah. And then put the car in Coe Park, going once, going twice. I don't know what that is, that's probably before my time. Auction, it's an auction for crashed cars. Okay. But yeah, And then off. Southern Water paid out. Did you yeah. get a whiplash claim? Uh, did you have, know, did I you have whiplash? I don't know if I did have whiplash at the time. Oh. Better look into that now. Yeah, you paid 15 <laughs> years after, claim, put a little whiplash claim in. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, no, that's it, but like, yeah, the fact that you come away from it alive is the main thing, isn't it? Like, no matter what happens in this fucking life, like, mate, you could rot off a fucking Lamborghini, but if you come out of it alive, like, one of my mates from Southampton, literally, like, four days ago, three, four days ago, had some meaty crash, where the engine is about 100 metres up the road, I don't know how it's happened, apparently he's hit a brick, he was definitely speeding, hit a brick, Flipped his car a couple times, like full car of people, everyone completely fine. Made this crash look like a fatal crash, like everyone. Did. I'll show you the pictures. Um, my phone's over there, but I'll show you the pictures after a bit. Oh, wait, mate, I don't know how he's alive, but and he spent a lot of money on his car, and that was like his pride and joy. But mate, end of the day, come out of it alive, fuck the car. Yeah, it's a it? piece of metal. It's yeah, I'd rather have jump he health and all my limbs over. Yeah, man. Even if you got fucking amputated from that, do you know what I mean? Like the fact that you can come out of that alive, happy days. Yeah. Health is wealth. Health is wealth over everything, honestly. Fucking, isn't it weird how we're on this earth and we look up to people like, people look up to celebrities, billionaires, people look up to Jeff Bezos, wish they were these people. Like, end of the day, mate, like you watching this, if you're young, like us, we are all richer than Jeff Bezos. We have time, we have more time than him, you know? So, in theory, time is your most valuable thing. Like, obviously, I d I'm not fucking delusional. I understand money can buy you time effectively and buy you happiness in things like, not so much materialistic things, but can buy you time with your family, can buy you better fucking food. Experiences. Can, yeah, yeah, experiences with your family. Like, it's no fun being broke. Anyone telling you fucking being broke is better than being fucking rich or having money is bullshit. And like, money doesn't actually bring you, I, this is my thoughts, like, money doesn't actually bring you happiness. But like it can definitely bring you a more comfortable life and can definitely buy you. So, like I, I look at money as fun tokens, yeah. I fucking love money, but not so I can buy. Mate, I don't really buy anything mad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, material stuff. Material yeah, I stuff. Think, yeah, like, like yeah, mon yeah, fun tokens. Fun to do, tokens to do man. stuff with. Yeah. The more money you've got, you can the more experiences you can go on. Yeah, mate. And it is important. As much as people go, you know, it's not everything. It's not everything. It's not but everything. Yeah. Like, if you can have fun with no money, when you've got money, 
it's a different world, isn't it? Like, yeah. I, I think there's things I'd like to do, and it's not necessarily that I haven't got the money for it. It's like some of these are beef for yacht excursions. I just think I know how hard I have worked for a couple of grand. I wouldn't want to go and smunk it in one no, day yeah, mate. on a yacht to have loads of bottles of like champagne. Yeah, and like yacht thing. But I'm not surrounded by that sort of people that would really enjoy that because we'd all think, fucking hell, a couple of grand just to go around on a boat. Yeah. Like, you know, I've had enjoyment on a bloody little boat I bought a Facebook Marketplace, like some of the best times of my life, cruising down the river, a few desperados. Yeah. My boat don't look as good as some people's, but I'm doing the same. Yeah. I'm out in a nice day, and I'm, I've got this, I'm having the same vibe as them. Yeah. Their boat looks a little bit better, but I'm just yeah. living just as much. But yeah, like, if I had money to burn, I thought like, and two grand was nothing at all to me, but I don't think it ever will be. I still know the value of 20 pounds. That's, I, I think, I'm the same mate, I, I, I'm being 100% honest here, yeah, and obviously it's hard to say something, but if I had a hundred million pound in my bank account, I would still fucking shop in Primark, I, I would obviously buy things like that, but I'd still live pretty cheap, and you know, the, like, Lee taught me this one, yeah, and he's like, no matter, like fancy restaurants where you pay like stupid money, what's that one in Dubai where you pay like 200 pound for a steak? Oh, that guy. You know, and the salt name? fucking bay yeah. guy. Like fair play, that is a business module, fair fucking play, but like I am never gonna go to there in my life. Like I could never justify spending that money. Like I, Lee taught me this one, he's like, mate, if you like the most fucking best steak and like organic broccoli, wouldn't cost more than a tenner. Like if you went to fucking M and S and bought like a real good organic fucking fed steak and an organic broccoli and made a fucking meal, ten fifteen pounds sort of yeah. Like then nothing justifies going to a restaurant. Like I know someone went to the Shard and paid five hundred pounds for him yeah, and his missus meal. Yeah, it does seem meal. to be ridiculous. And it's right. like feel like. I don't care, 100 million pound in my bank, I ain't fucking eating at fancy restaurants, I ain't buying fucking 800 pound t-shirts, I ain't buying 15,000 pound watches, like, I'd invest my money, I'd invest it into smart things and I would spend it, mate, I, I love spending money on things, like, like for example, I'm going out to learn to paramotor, I got my skydiving license, like, I spend money on things, like, I don't give a fuck about materialism, mate, there's no way, like, I don't, see the value people rocking around in a thousand pound t-shirt to me that is yeah, it's dumb mate. it's not like some it's it's not like it's some special cotton no that like it's, it's like the like, same i it's, think if you if you if you're training hard eating good you can you can fill a million dollars in a three pound primark t-shirt straight up and i've been there up. go back a few months ago lee was in good shape a couple months ago <laughs> no but it's, it's like yeah it's not about what you like what you wear to make you feel good if you, you Feeling good comes from inside, doesn't it? Yeah. Like if I'm, like I feel a bit out of shape at the moment, but yeah, when I'm on it, training hard, eating good. Do you feel good? Yeah. And you've you've got some cheap, fresh clothes on. Like it doesn't have to be like anything special. Just yeah. a nice, fresh outfit, and you feel fresh. You feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Don't and I wouldn't feel any better wearing. I've been. I would never. Yeah. Some of these people that. To spend stupid money on clothes if they want to and it makes them happiness yeah if that makes you happy like i'm not one to judge someone else's obviously everyone's on a different journey to me that seems dumb and like that would just stress me out but like to some people if that truly makes you happy but i do believe like heavily branded stuff like are you buying that for you or are you buying that for other people like the way i i don't know that's that's how i see it like it's marketing isn't it, yeah it's marketing it's like uh them see them bagels over there you could buy a, mar a fancy mars bar 10 grams of protein blah mm -hmm. blah cleverly marketed yeah cleverly marketed and cleverly, cleverly i don't know what um, it costs two pound fifty or you can have yeah. one bagel with a bit of peanut sauce the same amount of protein but it's, it's like anything if you market it you can make money it's like i mean it's like well, yeah, yeah it's anything isn't it like yeah but i um i yeah 100 million pound in my bank account i would still rock plain clothes my granddad taught me this he said <laughs> even with things like Nike and stuff, like, you'll never really, obviously I have now and then, but like, I try not to wear fucking any, I don't actually own anything Nike or brand, the only stuff I really own is fucking cheap clothes and my own clothing, but when you wear Nike, yeah, you're paying over the odds, or let's, let's say fucking, what's, what's expensive, like, what, what do people wear, like, Balenciaga, let's say, you're paying... I think, I could be wrong, I'm not up to fashion with the fashion brands and that, but say you're paying over the odds, yeah, you're paying £200 for a t-shirt, which is ridiculous as it is, you're paying £200 for this t-shirt, and then, not only that, you're walking around advertising their brand. My granddad always said, like, if a big brand like Hugo Boss or fucking Chanel want me to advertise their brand, they'll pay me to walk around, because you're a walking advertisement. Mm -hmm. Like, And then, on top of that, I'm 
like this is just you walking around the street so if you buy nike for example you're an advertisement for nike you're walking around seeing thousand people you're giving them a thousand free impressions every single day now then when you post on your social media you're giving them more impressions then when you have big followings like us you're giving them even more free impressions there ain't no way i'm fucking rocking around in nike clothes without <laughs> nike me. unless nike's paying me straight up and like I'll, I'll, I've bought a few YouTuber clothing off of YouTuber people, and this is, to be fair, I'm a bit disgusted with myself that in fact I'm advertising H&M here, but... That's been, the story of the fact that he's wearing that tonight is, oh, yeah. that's been sitting in my car boot for about a month, yeah, for and about I was like, is this yours? And I was freezing my bollocks off outside, we were stood outside with like his mates, and I was absolutely shivering my bollocks off because I'm in some shorts. Oh, I've got these shorts for £2 from Primark. <laughs> Fucking decent shorts, these. Um... But yeah, freezing my bollocks off. So I've got these H&M eight pound hoodie. Oh, I actually like this, you know, jumper. But yeah, I've bought some YouTuber merch because I like supporting people that like I actually watch. And I, I don't actually have any fucking actual. Like, I have a few Disco Boy shirts as well, which I'll, I'll rep happily. Like, but actual, like that's different. Supporting like someone I watch or like a uh, friend's clothing brand. Like Harry, little Harry just releases eight yard clothing. Fucking love it. Wear it all yeah. the time. I'll make videos in it. That's different, but. An actual big brand, mate, there ain't no way I'm paying over the odds. And obviously paying like £20 for a t-shirt is different or like £30, £40 for a hoodie. But like when you go into the markets of £400 for a hoodie, mate, that, that to me is fucking ridiculous. And same with trainers. Like for, I've never spent more than £50 on a pair of trainers. I don't think I'm a bit like that I'll probably I don't know maybe a little bit more people probably watching this like Ali you're a fucking tight you're bastard. a cheapskate you're a cheapskate but honestly I couldn't give a fuck like I think all these things mate if they want me to wear a Balenciaga t-shirt and it, it baffles me that people will spend this money like over the odds and then be a marketing boy for them like you're paying stupid money like you're getting ripped off and then you're advertising them and then on top of that some of these people have thousands of followers on the internet and you're advertising them for free and tagging them in it i've seen people tag them in it like yeah. the same with gym shark like all these brands i don't know i don't know i just it's clever I've, marketing i mean anyone who's got these brands is, is killing mate them, fair play like I, I rate it massively yeah if you're some, charging yeah. 800 pound for a t-shirt or seven five hundred pounds i don't know i don't know what these cost but i know they're ridiculous like fair some play. of it is good stuff like gym shark is actually oh yeah gym shark is actually designed clever like actually good worthy yeah i was i didn't actually mean to slate gym shark there that was just a brand that come off the top of my head yeah like, some of it i do think i, I think gym shark's actually a solid brand i do fair. sometimes go to the gym think should i actually buy some decent gym gear i didn't need to look like a proper little gym guy of it all yeah i'll just rock in there with my fucking poundland shorts i'm on. just a tight bastard i <laughs> literally the way i see it i'll straight to prime like two pound for that five pound for that wham bam thank you man but no gym shop is actually a solid brand to be fair and i like what they're doing like in the influence space and ben francis is an absolute fucking g and he's created a beast brand like that fair play. and that's not stupidly priced like gym shop is affordable yeah. pricing i'm more to aiming this at the fucking i don't even know the brands what gucci balenciaga hugo uh, what are the brands i don't even I, know I, I, whatever I'm them, not sure brands, them what's that song fuck the brands fuck the no 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 brands. not that no I don't, I don't, that's not even a song just made that no, up. no. I, I predict an earthquake it says it's something in there I don't know but I think if I had if you had 100 million pound in the bank 100 would million you buy, pound would you buy like Gucci and shit no I, I, buy, I actually like H&M H&M solid I would I'll go there H&M. I think I'd get like a fashion person be like I want so I want 20 outfits let's go there and if I like it like I went to a uh, when I was in Essex the other day. The, the only way is Essex he was in, he's a sellout. He's made it all the way nah, into the Essex. I, I got, I, it's not an opportunity, <laughs> but it's, it's just a thing. Like, oh, do you want to be an extra in Towie? I was like, oh, fuck it. Oh, he <laughs> cracked us up today. We were watching the video. He goes, he goes, someone sent me this, and we watched the video. <laughs> Chilling in the background. Oh, he rolled a clip. Can you roll the clip, or you can get coffee? Oh, he I cracked me. You just see Lee stood in the background. Like, what was he doing? He's like, literally just talking to someone about, like, what should we do? But... Uh, where was I going with that? Sorry, you were in Essex clothing. Someone gonna pay f- like style your clothes. Yeah, that's stuff. it. I just have like yeah. What some did you of do it? I'd like, I'd like, some of the stuff they were wearing. I'd like. I think I'd, I'd like twenty cool outfits. Mm. Oh, that's it. There's a guy there, a real nice jacket. I thought, where'd you get that jacket? I forgot the name of the brand. Like, I would have bought that if it was. I don't know. Probably no, but that's it's no more than eighty quid. I would have. Yeah, but that's no different. Like even that, if say that was a couple hundred, and you. But you liked that for what it was. Like, you didn't like that as a fashion statement. You didn't like that so you could flash the brand. 
like you like that for what it is that's different like if you like something for what it is it's a different story but a lot of these brands are a fashion statement isn't it it's like I'm bigger than you I've got like and I don't, that's, that's, I don't necessarily know I think people just love brands don't they me and you just Ain't maybe, I'm yeah, from maybe family I'm that don't care about brands. Yeah, so am I, yeah. I'm from my granddad telling me that brands are a bad thing. I don't know, maybe I'd like I'd be interested to hear someone else's opinion that is obviously all into brands. I've I've got a few friends that are that are and they, they make valid opinions and at the end of the day, you earn your money, you spend your money on whatever you want, but to yeah, me I'd rather like, have life experience. I'd rather have life mate, I've just spent thirteen hundred pound on a fucking paramotoring course and that to me ain't a waste of money like that's an experience i'm going to be flying in the fucking sky with a paramotor thing yeah. i couldn't mate i'd happily splash money on experiences i've spent a lot of money on skydiving a lot of things like that like experiences over things definitely i think in a way that's why i feel i haven't got much to show for what i've done because i've spent it all on fun yeah things. but mate fuck but it, I, don't mi- I don't mind that i don't mind that i do think like the money you've earned since i've been alive where's it gone but a lot of my money has gone on experiences and fun things. Imagine you could see like a stat chart. You know, like in a game, you can see a stats. Imagine there was a way to access stats to your life. Like, right, this is how much you spent on soft drinks. This is how much you spent on Coca Cola. This is how much you spent on food. Big this, Macs. Yeah, this is how much you spent on Big Mac. Mate, you'd be horrified. You'd be like, fucking, I spent fifteen grand on this, like hundred grand on drink, whatever. I'd, I don't know what the stats would be, but imagine over your entire life since you was a kid, like even your mum buying you things, mate, it would be a lot of money. This It'd is what you so spend on money. birds just to get laid. This is what you spend on drinks for birds, yeah. <laughs> But I'm, I'm quite it, tight with that. In fact, sometimes <laughs> oh, go on. chatting to birds like, do you want, like, is it? Do you, do you want me to get you another drink? Like, I'm trying to get laid here. So, do, do you, are you going to give out, or oh, should I just, should I, talk, just should I talk to someone else? What do they say to that? They just find it funny, don't they? <laughs> but someone's using that. Someone from the podcast is stealing that. I reckon they're like, "Fuck, I've been spending all this money. Like, I have to use Lee's technique." What? Just ask them straight. Like, are you, are you, are you going to give out afterwards? Because I don't mind pumping another sixteen quid into you. <laughs> <laughs> well, money's a weird thing, man. Isn't it mm. weird how like you? Some people are born into stupid wealth. Some yeah. people are born poor as fuck. Some people know the value of money. Some people have to work hard for money. Some people, for example, like. There's a lot of people working for minimum wage in this life. Like, majority of people, man. Like, my mum worked for basically that her whole life. Like, I worked for that. Like, most people work for that, and if not a bit more. And then you've got other people that literally spend more money than you will ever earn in your whole family in their life in, like, a day. Like, you've got literally people on earth that are spending more. But then... Money's just a weird thing, man. Like, a whole life, isn't it weird? Like, a whole life is controlled by money in one way or another. Like, no matter what you do in life, like, you need to earn money, like, to live. And, like, all your actions throughout the day somewhat revolve around making money. Yeah. No. Or, like, yeah, it's no. in the back of your mind to make money. Whatever you do, you need it to, you need yeah, it to survive. Yeah, man. And I love money. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I fucking love making money. I don't so much love spending money. I just love making money, like, off of different ways. Like, not working. Like, an actual... I like actually work, I do, like, as much as people don't think, like, I do actually fucking do stuff. I don't just get it, but, like, I've built some systems that pay me, and I, I'm quite clued up with making money online now. But, like, at one point, I fucking, I couldn't. Like, I had to work a fucking job, and it just amazes me that there's so many opportunities in this life at the moment to make money. But I, I, I do like making money. I just, I find it really interesting how you can make there's so like how many opportunities there is in this life right now to make money online. And I think yeah, if you can have like passive income that's just ticking over, but the active way of earning money, it's got to be fun. That's what work. That's what mm. I'm working at the moment. I've kind of reached the stage, and I think you have. Like you can earn money passively, but you've still got to do something got to do in something your day. Your mind, yeah. Where the majority of people at work that's fun, whether that's making vlogs and it's earning a bit, but everything else, I don't care. I just think I can't see myself having a full time job again. Whatever I do. It's got to be fun. It's got to, mm-hmm. it's got to fill my soul with like but, fire, and actually, like buzz, I've got a buzz for that. I'm at like a crossroads where I think I want to earn money, but I'm not earning money and feeling something. shit yeah. for it. Like I'm gonna earn it's money. Like that but balance, isn't it? You need you need that balance. But society again teaches you that, like society, what you done with plumbing, massive respect, because not a lot of people would do that. Like you had a very comfortable thing that was gonna pay you a fucking lot of money. In, in society a fucking good amount of chunk of money but you give that up because you knew it wasn't making you happy now society teaches you leave school go get the biggest paying job and you 
in theory, a lot of people, mate, would find it hard to give up that kind of money because that is life-changing money, but you knew that was going to absolutely destroy your soul, so you give it up. It's like massive fucking respect. Mm -hmm. not a, yeah, like, a lot I of couldn't do, do it. Like, I couldn't, I'm, going, I'm going for a weird time. It's not the best time of my life. I think... Mate, no matter what you do, there's no right or wrong, but you need to enjoy your job. And I'm not saying to everyone, go fucking do YouTube. But honestly, I would say you're more successful. God's honest truth. If you work in the co-op, stacking shelves, and you're earning fucking minimum wage, that you're better doing that if you enjoy your workplace. and Because some people do. Like I know someone that works like a regular job, stacking shelves, and fucking loves it. He works with cool people. He enjoys it. And he has a good time and he loves his job. And like, mate, there's no wrong in that. It's like, the people, aren't It's the job. people you're surrounded with. But if you're enjoying your job and you haven't got a dickhead boss, you are much better doing that for minimum wage. If you're actually going to work happy and you're going to sleep at night happy, then you are going to fucking work in a 500 grand a year job if you're stressed to your eyeballs and you and fucking hate yeah. life and you're miserable. Like you're 100%, 100% and mate, society yeah. doesn't teach you this. School doesn't teach you this. No, no one no, fucking it teaches, teaches you this. That Chase money, like money is the well, main. Well, I'm saying if you've got these qualifications, you go to uh, university, you go, you go to college, do this. Yeah, all going on about trades and stuff. Like, it's not saying if you're happy, that's all that matters. If you're, yeah, like school is a load of bollocks in the Western world. Ricky Brewer told me this: the school system isn't broken. It is there to do what it's made to do, and that's to fucking make you a cookie cut human. <laughs> Like to churn you out the exact same every time. They strip all creativity from you. They don't want you to fucking. They don't work on your passions. They don't work on your strong points. They they create this fucking bullshit system that drums you down, strips all creativity from you, and makes you a robot, and then churns you out into the real world and teaches you some fucking bullshit lie, and then makes you get a mortgage and makes you trapped to the system and reliant on the system even more. And then feeds you bullshit through the media and then feeds you junk food and keeps you happy with entertainment and watching Netflix and then you're stuck in a cycle for the rest of your life and then wham bam, you get to 60 and you retire happily and then you're like, oh fuck, I've been scammed my whole life, it's bullshit. I just think as long as you're, if you get up and you go to a job and you enjoy it, yeah, but well, I know, I, I find it weird because I, I never really knew what I want to do and I, even now I think I don't really know what I want to do. Yeah. Um, happiness man happiness is the key no yeah, matter what the fuck you're doing in life whether you're you're working a minimum wage job whether you're making millions whether you're travelling whether you've got a dream like if you fucking wake up happy in the morning and you go to bed at night happy no matter what the fuck you're doing in that day like you've succeeded like don't let this society make you believe you haven't succeeded because you haven't got a fucking Lamborghini or you ain't got hot girls like all that shit all that external I think that's the problem with social media man like it's not yeah it's not good you're looking at the, a, a showcase of the best bits of everyone's life and probably not everyone you're looking at a thousand people's best bits yeah all day man. he and she's getting married he's got a new driveway I'll look at them enjoying their holiday yeah. and you're just thinking fucking everyone's living some yeah, mad better man. life than me I fall into this habit a lot I'll be honest like I fucking load my phone up and I see perfect relationships and traveling and skydiving and fucking big asses and load of money and buying fucking 100 grand nfts and fucking all these things mate and then if you're consuming that for five hours of the day which sometimes i do like i sit there scrolling and scrolling mate you just feel empty yeah so that's it yeah you start you're questioning thinking. your own life you're like what the fuck am i whilst you're sat here in your they are fresh boxes <laughs> what are they called i forgot the brand Step one. Step one. While you're sat here in your step ones and skidders down the back of them, laying there, you're looking at everyone else living their best lives and you're just questioning your own life. But that's not reality, man. And I think if you buzz, I, I remember a time when, like, pre-lockdown, I used to buzz the next day and think, right, I better go, right, I'll set my long, I need to try and get eight hours tonight. And it used to be, like, every day buzzing. Yeah, buzzing, mate. If you wake up in the morning, oi, honestly, if you get out of bed in the morning with that spark inside you... I haven't actually got this spark inside me anymore. I've lost that spark, <laughs> which is peak. But I once had that spark. I wake up in the morning with that fucking spark and drive and hunger. And I'd wake up in the morning and every moment that I was awake, I would smash fucking life. Mm. And like, if you've got that right now, if you're chasing a goal, keep fucking, keep at it. Don't give up and don't listen to no one. Because, mate, it's the, it's the journey that is more important than the just destination. The journey is where the happiness is, not the destination. The and destination is six foot under. What, where we're all going yeah so all you all you can do is enjoy the journey enjoy the journey don't take it too seriously I feel like I need to take my own advice sometimes man don't take it too seriously um yeah man what's, what's your plans at the moment though what's, where, where, where are you gonna where do you see yourself in the next couple of years 
honestly, Lee, you'll know this. I change my mind 50 times a week. Yeah, he phones oh. me. He's like, fuck this, I'm leaving this country. I'm going to Bali <laughs> next week or the next, no, next no, hour. Next, I've, got next a, I've, hour. Got, I've got a little lock up in Southampton. <laughs> then now, oh, yeah, I'm just going to be working on this lock up thingy. Uh, oh, that's not good. And then he's like, oh, I'm going paramotor in next month. No, actually, no, I ain't doing that, no, no. Yeah, fuck this country. It goes from a cycle. It's usually, fuck this country. That happens a couple <laughs> times a week. Fuck this country, I'm out. This is depressing as fuck. Fuck everyone. And then it goes to, right, I'm going to start some businesses. Got some really idea, good ideas. Then it goes from, sometimes it sways to like, right, going to get into property, going to buy some property, rent that out, Airbnb it out, buy some land, create some things, Airbnb that out. That comes across every now and then. That comes into my brain. But usually it's, fuck this country, I'm out or let's start some businesses, get some lockouts. But yeah, I'd, honestly. That's ADHD, I think it's eight, I think we've both yeah, Lee, got it. Lee sent me something, it was like ADHD, and yeah, I, I think like, we've we both got it, because I do it, I do it. I'm, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that. And I see something about post-it notes rushing through my head constantly. I'm yeah, like, fuck, whatever I'm doing, whatever stop. I'm doing. I feel quite focused on this, but uh, so I, I kind of looked forward to this a lot. Of, I haven't looked forward to a lot, not looked forward to it, but I thought that'd be cool. Like, I've gone to the effort of setting it up. Yeah, I, I really like this, mate. I actually like sitting down and chatting with people. Like, I, I got George on the podcast, and I was sat down with you. I went to Jack's mate's for podcast, and I, I actually enjoy just sitting down and chatting. Like, YouTube's very, like, making YouTube videos is very, do you know what I mean? Not real, it's high energy, it's not fake but like it's entertainment it's high energy you've got to be snappy you've got to be quick podcast is like real raw and you yeah, sit down no, and talk it's, it's you it's just like chatting away normally how yeah, people I actually, usually see you yeah I like, I like podcasts a yeah, lot yeah it's not trying to be viral thinking it's not trying to be funny yeah it's not trying to be fucking quick and trying to get your yeah it's just it's just sitting down and chilling isn't it and like I enjoy it man I enjoy talking I think it's sick but I, I think podcasts are podcasts are a sick thing man podcasts are Definitely, you can have just interesting conversations with people. Like Jack, Jack, mate. Like, mate, I've listened to so many of his podcasts. He has mad interesting guests on. Joe Rogan. Like, that guy just has mad interesting guests on. But, yeah, I don't know. What's next for me? Um, podcasting. Really want to start podcasting. I've just rented a unit in Southampton. Um, like an office space. It's quite big. Um, it's got, like, a little room. So I'm going to set my podcast up in there. Um, I'm going back Friday. Going to decorate that. I think I need... Need more of a like a what's it called like a routine. Like yeah, a I think routine. Routine oh, is I think very I like important. That. Routine. I need to get some sort of regular little routine going. Routine is the most important thing ever. I used to think in my life, I used to think, mate, I want to get to that point where I'm so comfortable and I can fucking chill and not do anything. And honestly, <laughs> that was my goal. That was my goal. I didn't want to fucking work. I wanted to get to that point. I've somehow got to that point. I got to that point at 22 years old, I realised, right, I'm comfortable, I'm pretty chilling right now, I can chill for quite a while, and then you realise you can only do that, you can only fucking travel so much, you can only sit on a beach so much, you can only fucking do fuck all for so much, like, you will lose your mind, you need to have some sort of routine, and even if that's getting up at 8 in the morning and going to the gym, if that's fucking working from 12 till 4, if that's going to a job 8 till 4, whatever, you need some sort of solid routine, man, like, routine is so fucking important, mate. And the more you do... You ain't going to be happy just setting in for some little achievement. No, you want because of what you've already achieved. Like set the bar high. The kind of subscribers and that. You've that's quite an achievement. Mm. You've got a, yeah. You've got you've set that bar now. So whatever you do next, you've kind of set that bar of like achievement, haven't you? You can't just settle for like something real simple. Yeah, I set the bar, mate. I, I went through a stage. I went through a stage. I have to like. I reached twenty two years old. I had three million subscribers on YouTube. I was fucking comfortable financially. I had some things set in place that were paying me. Like I was doing what I enjoyed. But like, I reached a point where I just fucking you get you get to the destination, man. You get to the destination where you think you're gonna be happy. Like that's the that was where the journey was leading to. That exact point. You get to the destination. Same as, mate, saving up for a Lamborghini. You think when you get that Lamborghini... I ain't speaking from experience here. I haven't got a Lamborghini. But I've actually spoke to people that have got a Lamborghini. And I had a really interesting conversation with James from Southampton about this. And he was saying... And he was like, yeah, like, once you get to... It's the destination, man. It's the journey that is where the happiness lies, not in the destination. Well, it seems like a fun thing. 
I mean, I haven't got a Lamborghini, but I saved up for the car I kind of wanted. Saving up for its fun, go traveling on the train, getting to get it, it, it's fun, driving yeah. it for an hour, a day, a couple of months, and then you're like, I've got that, I've done that now. Yeah, done that, tick that off. So, and mate, I believe that will happen with absolutely anything in life. Same with money, followers, anything. That's the thing. Money is numbers, followers is numbers. It's the same when when I was getting YouTube, like, I remember getting 500 subscribers. I was fucking over the moon, mate. I was like 500 people. That's more than people that were in my school subscribed to me. Then a thousand. Then then you set the bar right. I want ten thousand. Then you set the bar, mate. Million was the, the goal like 1 million once I hit 1 million boom all numbers numbers are the same like 1 million 2 million didn't do it 3 million didn't do it and that's why like I sort of lost like 10 million wouldn't do it for me like if I got 10 million I, mate, I really couldn't give a fuck right now like number and like at the first like I don't know I still see people do it like they have low followers they like scroll they're like oh I've got, I've got another 10 followers like they get gas and obviously I understand I was there once upon a time but like numbers are empty same with money mate once you get 1,000 once you want 1,000 you want 10,000 once you get 10 you want 1 million once you, you think Jeff Bezos don't want another 100 billion like mate same thing it's never ending man like these things ain't the answer to happiness as well like all these materialistic things like just ain't the answer to happiness I think, I, think I want to live my life just having fun doing fun things Right now, I'm not too bothered about videos, but just filling my brain, exciting the brain. What's that saying? Making the brain happy. Making your brain happy. You can't make your arm happy. Your arm doesn't have a brain. Like, your arm can just chill there. It does what it does. But it's all about the brain. Make the brain happy. That's all you've got to do. But I think my brain would be happy. Just your arm can make your brain happy, don't it? <laughs> Childish. Whereas, yeah, that's all. I think I just want to fill my days with more fun things but reality is since lockdown I've, I've, I've sort of thought right I need to work on some sort of passive income because I've, I've lost my Facebook page now that's gone that was a passive income comfortable but I, yeah, I was comfortable I feel yeah. that's good that that's gone you know like similar with my website man never get too comfortable in this life like comfortable a comfortable place ain't good. No, you don't think I so. I don't think so. No, it's ultimately, not. Ultimately, like a little some bit. Com like, yeah, some home some comforts, comfort. Some comfort, yeah, but I think not now, ultimately. Now ultimately. I'm ready to get out of my comfort zone yeah. again. If you hadn't got rid of that Facebook, same with me, if I hadn't got rid of that website, how, where does it lie? Like, you get so comfortable, you don't have that drive in you anymore, so you, you keep going. But then, I don't know, maybe some would argue that that's the goal, like, to get comfortable. But man, I just... I've been there, I've been in that comfort zone, like, I don't think it's a good, good place. Like, I think, maybe, maybe, I want to get financially comfortable, right now I'm fucked financially, like, no, I'm not fucked, I'm not fucked, I've been pretty smart with my money, but, like, I'm not, I've not really got anything coming in, like, I'm spending more than I've fucking got coming in at the moment. Um, getting comfortable financially, passive income, mate, I've, how have I got to 24 years old and only just learned about passive income? Why the fuck are they not teaching this shit in school? Because they don't yeah, want I'll you to be... That. Mate, they don't want you to be comfortable. Like They don't want... They want you to work for the system your whole life. They don't teach you about passive income. Mate, real rich people don't work for a living. Other people are paying them. They've got fucking investments. They've got stocks. They've got dividend stocks. They've got fucking investments that are paying them. And that's how real rich people get rich. Real, real rich people. What, what are they doing every day? Going to little posh London restaurants... Yeah, I don't know, but that ain't the answer, mate. That that's just empty. Like they will, they'll be working on something. Like I've, I want to, I think I'd, I'd love to get to a stage where something's happening that's earning me money during the forty hours yeah. that everyone's working. But it's fun stuff. Like it's fun things. Like one day is a trampoline park. The next day it's water skiing club on a Thursday. Yeah. Like every day is just a fun thing. Yeah. And Friday, you I do know. Like, yeah, like the thing is, if you can get a couple houses, yeah, like. Properties are pretty solid investment. If you can get a couple houses, that's just some. This is my this is my aim. Yeah, this is what when you say where do you see yourself? Yeah, having a, being on the property ladder, couple of people paying me, mate. Even if you can somehow get two houses in England, yeah, like which is fucking not cheap. But if you can somehow get two houses, you can basically probably earn fifteen hundred to two grand a month passive income. Well, let's say fifteen hundred pound a month passive income after your mortgage payments and that. And you can be living in Bali. Someone else is paying, this is my goal. Like I wanna get a couple passive income streams and I wanna go live in Bali. And I don't wanna just do nothing, mate. I know that's not the answer, but like do some fucking meaningful shit. Like maybe spend your time wisely, like spend your time helping out at some local charities, like spending your money, investing it into things. Like just having fun. Like, having exploring fun. the exploring world. Exploring the world, mate. Traveling around, like having a sick base, having a sick look. Mate, honestly, my dream is to have some houses here, not live in them, live in Bali, 
and people that are living in my houses in England are paying me to live in an Airbnb in Bali. That's my ultimate goal. Reality right is, if, if you're getting a couple of grand a month passive income, you can live in Bali, good. Mate, you'd be living like a king. And I fucking love Bali, man. I think, mate, the more I've travelled, the more I've realised, like, England's a fucking... Mate, England's a sick place. I do miss England when I travel, but, like, it's a fucking miserable land, man. It's a it's hustle. Shit. It's like, all, all anyone does here is want to make money and, and like, work, and yeah, work, yeah. work, 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 work. Mate, there's no fun. Like, in other countries, they've just got, I feel like, that balance a little bit better, mate. I Lifestyle, fucking love Bali. Like, yeah, I remember, Lifestyle. like, being in Bali, there's some of them beach bars and that. Just chilling more, like chilling out more. Yeah, now. no one's thinking, oh, right, I need to be doing this. I need to be like, everyone's so chilled. Oh, what are you doing tonight? But well, yeah, it's like so. Like yeah. you go, you go to LA. Everyone's in fucking hustle grind mode, which I rate. I do rate like hustle grind mode. There's a balance. You've got to get that balance right. But like, I feel like in what we call third world countries, mate, they've got the balance of life a lot better. Like you see locals working out, like. You see fucking local people. Like I got to know quite a few Balinese people out there, and they're just lovely, genuine, kind, amazing people. And it's like in England, yeah, there's good. People. Like obviously, not everyone, mate. I'm just, I'm judging it as a whole. But like majority of people, mate, you go to central London, people don't even fucking hold a door open for you. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's just like <laughs> fucking barging into your fucking. No one even lets old granny stand up, sit down on the bus. You know what I mean? Like, mate, like this hustle mentality. I don't know. I just. I love England, but the thing is, I say this, my ADHD, again, I'll get to Bali and I'll be like, fuck, I want to go back to England now. My ADHD I do think, bad. yeah, life, I think the lifestyle balance is the hardest thing you'll ever get right. And that's something I really want to work on now. I want to set something up that's Will you a ever passive get it income right? and, and something else that's an active income that's, that I sort of go to. I make a few videos that do well and I just sort of go around like you said, like health clubs, eating good, sitting in a cool little coffee shop by the Yeah, beach. doing some work. Mate, I actually love working. Like, yeah, I, I think working on like a laptop at the beach, like working on something that you're happy about, like something like a business that you like, something that actually gives you some sort of spark inside you. Yeah, that you have a passion for. Mm. Then that's going to make you, you want to do it. You're like, plum, it like, yeah, recently, obviously, the plumbing thing, I was like, yeah, you I like, think I FaceTimed you, didn't I? Was just yeah, like, I remember, he looked like, like a zombie, like. He this is be bollocks. Like, I, I think really that was the exact it. words as well. This is bollocks. Yeah, and I thought doing something active that you're passionate about, whether that's some sort of thing. I think there's so many things you can do that you're not passionate about that earn money. And that if it's not taking enough of your time, you can bank a good bit of money. You're really helping yourself by doing that. But yeah, something that you're proper passionate about. Yeah. Is the, is the way forward. Something like, that gives you drive, man. Not even... I need that at the moment. Like at the moment, I think, what am I really passionate about? What do I actually want to do? Do you know what I think you need in this life? You need something that makes you money. Then you need a passion that doesn't make you money. Because I feel like once you turn a passion into making you money, no matter what the fuck it is, who was I speaking to about this recently? I had a weird, like, unique job. I can't remember. Fuck, I was speaking to someone really interesting it's about this. come out good. Yeah, it should be right. Never know, do you? Never know. But anyway, I was speaking to someone. Can't think who it is off the top of my head. But anyway, we're talking about who the fuck was I speaking to? Don't know, but um, when you turn your passion into your job, no matter what it is, it no longer is a passion. Like, once you have to do it rather than doing it, like, similar things sort of happen with the YouTube stuff, you know? Like, at first I was doing it because I loved it, then when it become a job and you're making money of it, it's just different, man. My, like, my uh, three majors ago, like, years ago, I was like, imagine earning £500 a week. And my, once my dream was just to do that, if I could earn five hundred pound a week, man. if I could work, earn five hundred pound a week DJing, fuck, yeah. think what I could spend fuck if I had a spare <laughs> five hundred pound a week. Yeah, that's mental. Like, I used to think like, that's yeah, like, yeah that's ma think. amazing. Like, and now you know I've done that, and I have over a thousand pound in the bank now. <laughs> Classic. No, uh, yeah, it's weird. But now I just yeah, I think now uh, through lockdown and everything really got me down. Fucking, I don't know what's going on in my head. I don't even know now. It's all a bit confused. Uh, I think yeah, just to just to be proper happy, get like energy and just feed Mate. the soul and just feel good. Feel the totally myself. I sort of since I come out of lockdown, I have sort of ups and down days. I just think, what am I doing? What do I actually want? And weird times. And you know, we've had like eighteen months of weirdness, and then. To come back to yeah, the DJ and that, and it's still all a bit weird, and everyone's still not quite like they were. Some venues are cool, but other venues are still a bit sick. It's all a bit weird. And uh, yeah, I still think, because I've had such a long time out, it's made me think, is this what I want to do? Do I always want to be here? All my such mates are out on weekends. 
I'm, ba I'm back here. Like, I feel like I want more now. Like, I've done that. I feel like the lockdown completed my DJ. And I think I don't want to do it as much anymore. Have you ticked that one off the box and it's like next next chapter now? I think I had more of a social life when we were allowed to go around friends' houses again. And it, I kind of feel like oh, I'm losing, so you I've had lost like a my taste week, of it. You had a taste. I've lost of my it. weekends back to DJing again. I think I, I want that. That so you had a taste, that, yeah. You like got back, but you weren't DJing, so you had a taste of going out with all your mates, and then now it's like you've got to go to a job. Yeah, I get that. I get they're that. at week, they're off at weekends, and I'm and off now working. You're working, yeah. So I enjoyed. What was that then? I don't know what it was. The ghost, probably. Oh, imagine in the video, like people commenting, "Oh, at thirty-eight zero one, look, you see a ghost fly past the window." Because <laughs> <laughs> look at the window; it's looking yeah. very ghosty. Um. <laughs> What yeah, else, no. What that's, else do you want to uh, talk about? No, that's um, DJ, 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 DJ. Fuck, I was just about to say something, and then I talked about ghosts, and now I've absolutely forgot where I was going with that. For fuck's sake, I hate it when I do that. Um, did lockdown fuck your head up? Yeah. Lockdown absolutely has obliterated my mind. But as I was saying today, like I've been one of these excuse makers, and I've been like. Using lockdown, I saw something on Twitter the other week and it was like, how long are we going to use this lockdown as an excuse for everything? It's like, it's all anyone talks about right now. And I've been the same, I've been like, yeah, nah, my head's fucked, man. Like, oh, lockdown's fucked, lockdown's fucked. Mate, that was fucking ages ago. We ain't even been in a lockdown for a year. I'm going to stop using that as an excuse. I'm going to no, stop. No, we only come out of the lockdown like. Was that not like a year ago? No. I've lost track of time, mate. I've honestly, since no, we've, 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 where we've been disobeying rules for over a year. <laughs> In fact, I think it only came out July, August, September. <laughs> <laughs> did it wait really yeah oh it's because yeah oh yeah I realised oh, I actually just deeped it yes yeah, because I've never been in a <laughs> lockdown <laughs> that's why shit I forgot but, about that that's why it seems so long ago but yeah um yeah lockdown fucked my head up man like the whole just everything that's happened since Covid has absolutely fucked my brain up and the past two years how long has it been two years since it happened January yeah. remember we were in Bali man just before we were in China like January 2020 trying to get flights back out I'll come back for my mum's birthday trying to get flights back out and things were getting cancelled yeah, I managed getting... to fly but we were in China like before Covid even was a thing here man no we we left the same day it got announced Everyone was like, oh, we better get out of China. Oh, yeah, yeah, we we're, were going out that night. We're getting loads of messages, and we were in China, like, fucking climbing some yeah, massive no, I think people were like, what do you know you're not in China? Huh? Why are you <laughs> meeting them? Like, oh, yeah, oh, everyone yeah. in the whole news, yeah. Everyone all over the news in the UK. Pandemic, COVID hits China. China's a danger zone. Looks on our story. Woohoo! We're in Shanghai, baby! Ridiculous. Oh, ridiculous, mate. Actually mental, but... um, I want to I wanna look back on the past couple of years. I'm tucking into these quick. These are bloody good. I've eaten the whole bowl. Sorry, Tracy, if you're watching this. I've eaten all your fucking cookies. Yeah, it's been a hard, it's been a hard couple of years. I want to look back on it and sort of... I'm a fat cunt. It, it kind of made me grow up a bit. I want to look back on it and think, yeah, that changed me, but, you know... Sorry. <laughs> Podcast ruiner. Yeah, I, I want to look back on it and just think, right, that, you know, that stage of my life wasn't fun, and it wasn't fun for anyone, you know? Fucking people lost their lives, you use, know? Use the negatives as a positive, And yeah. pe people fucking committed suicide Mate, more than ever. a lot of people. A lot and of people. And I think sometimes I, understand I thought, I understand, I understand suicide more than ever now, because I felt it, but then yeah. I felt... Mate, I've felt I've, some I've, low I've, points through just fucking whole shit, man. Whole two years, I've questioned my entire existence and whole fucking life, and, like, just the world's in shambles, and... Yeah, mate, a lot of people are taking their lives and it's fucking sad, but if anything I've learned from my life, man, like the roughest of times makes the strongest of people. Like you have to go through real rough times for change to come out of the other end. Like you're gonna look back at this, we're all gonna look back on this in either two ways. That absolutely fucked us and we let it fuck us and we carried on being yeah. fucked. Or we're gonna look at it and go, right, went for a fucking rough stage. I've come out the other end, I've come out on top, I've come through the dirt, I'm fucking in the clouds now, I'm out, and you're gonna thank this time, like, you're gonna use this time as a positive, like, although it's a negative, like you just said, it made you question things, it made you wanna grow up, it made you, like, question things, which ain't necessarily a bad thing. I think before I just lived my whole life as a big kid, which I didn't see a problem with it, but now, since that lockdown, made me think, I need to work on other things that I want in my life. Mm. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely it's, done that for me as well. And I think I, I generally see, I think lockdown is the first time I realised why people take their own lives. 
because I felt real low points. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Big John the other day, Big John Fury, he was doing some podcast or something. He goes, well, he was talking about him in prison. He oh, goes, I saw that, yeah. Oh, I could either die and get eaten by worms, that's the end of me, or I could step up and carry on and blah, blah, blah. And look where I am now, he's saying, do you know what I mean? Oh, I saw I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying look where I am now, but I'm thinking, once, you know, yeah. you've only got one life, like I was the magical sperm, the power sperm that made it through straight, you know, I made it through, do you know what I mean? I fought against the other ones and made it through. Mm. And then just, a, if you end your own life, that's it, you're gone then, that's your life lived. And especially when, like, talking about my sister, or like, all she wanted to do was live and didn't have a fucking option to do that. Yeah. And I don't think it's selfish, it's like jumping off a building with a parachute. I wouldn't, I don't even know if I'd had the bottle to do it, what Dylan does, like base jumping. But knowing you're going to do something like that without a parachute and that's your life That's gone, balls, that's man. That's bravery. That's, that's, that's think, bollocks. Yeah, that's like really that's thinking, fuck this, I don't want this. Yeah, like you have to be at a real fucking low point to be able to take that. Like, mate, same with me, like looking at that jump with a parachute, but let alone like without a parachute. And mate, a lot of people fucking do it. But... I get, mate, I get it, and I get, like, but uh, it's, humans, especially in this world, like, I feel, I feel like we're under so much stress, we, social media doesn't help, like, we're constantly comparing our lives to other people, mate, yeah, no, social I media's see why, so, why suicide is on the fucking uprise, man, and, like, mental health and depression, and there's no, again, take it back to the school, mate, when they're teaching you about life, Whilst they're teaching you how to add fucking X, Y, Z and lines and shit and teaching you bullshit that you don't need to know in life, why aren't they teaching you about your mental health? Why aren't they teaching you how to deal with your mental health? How to understand your emotions? What to do if you're feeling low? What, how to eat good? How to fucking exercise? Why don't they teach you about endorphins? Why, am I, why did it take me to 24 years old to fucking learn these things myself from fucking Instagram or from the internet? Why, did it, why didn't I learn these, this shit in school? Like these real important things. Mate, kids don't fucking know about mental health. Kids don't understand fucking mental health kids don't know why they feel shit kids don't know why they feel suicidal do you know what I mean Kid, kids mm -hmm. are committing a suicide like young fucking children are committing suicide and it's fucked mate it's fucked and I think social media has a massive part to play I think the food we're eating has a massive part to play I think the lies and stressful fucking bullshit lies that we live have a massive part to play I think lockdown had a massive part to play I think all these lockdowns and fucking shit that was meant to be in the public health interest have fucked it mate look at the suicide rights suicide rates through lockdown mate skyrocket people were losing their businesses but it was in the name of fucking good health you know what I mean it was in the name of good health and I understand whatever, I'm not a scientist, like the pandemic happened and shit, but no one give a fuck about people that were committing suicide, do you know what I mean? But there was a lot of people's mental health, and mate, people starting fucking businesses up, worked their whole life, saved up shitloads of money, people bought it, buying houses, all these things got absolutely fucked. People couldn't pay their mortgages because they were losing their fucking houses. All through this lockdown, mate. For the past two years, a lot of people killed themselves, and yeah, I just think, mate, take it back to school, they don't teach you how to fucking look at, mate, I don't understand why they should have oh, these yeah. things in school, man. They should have these things like to teach you about your fucking mental health. Like I didn't, I still don't know, man. I'm 24 years old. I still oh, no, don't I understand never, my I, own emotions and my fucking head and my mental health. Yeah, I, I, I do, but I, it never affected me until lockdown. I was just fucking happy all the time. Yeah, and I, I didn't know. Didn't I, I didn't know it. any different. Yeah, like you'd never experienced it. So you're almost naive because it's not. It's like seeing a colour. If I was to say, oh, this colour exists, you've never seen that, you don't understand that. So it's, it's like if someone was to talk about depression or suicide before, you wouldn't have understood it. But like people Same say, yeah, people say to me, oh, why are you so happy? Why is he so happy? Blah, blah, blah. But I remember some of my old nicknames would call, call me like Smiler and stuff. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> no, man. but it's I never, I thing. didn't know any different. And I obviously knew, like people say, oh, you're high energy. I'm just like, well, I just thought, well, I'm, People say I've got ADHD, like, it must be that. Yeah. I, d I didn't know any different, and I didn't... You have always been a good vibe. Like, I remember, like, when we first met, I don't know, just, like, you know if you hang around with someone and they're, like, a good energy and they just rub off... Same as if you hang around with a miserable person, they make you miserable. Like, every time I've ever been with you, you've made me laugh, you've made me fucking happy. We used to have such jokes times, and we used to have such good times, and, like, that was very contagious. You have always been fucking happy, but, yeah, past... Two years, mate. You've fucking gone down here, but like I said, don't not necessarily a bad thing. Right now, it's a bad thing, but it depends where you go from here. Do you know what I mean? You can let it destroy you. Or you I can do let feel, it make like, yeah. It. I feel, I feel, I've I've gone through the lowest, and I felt low uh, to the point when I was in your old flat. I, was, I woke up 
I didn't even know I was getting all these flutter shit, all this anxiety stuff. I didn't know about it. Doctors prescribed me propan or all these other things. I didn't want to take it. I did meditate and I got into quite a good place again. Not just through meditation, exercise and whatever. I felt back on track, but then I sort of went down again. I feel I feel I've done. I feel like I'm cryptocurrency. Like I've done a couple of them down. I went red. I went green. But I feel that I am coming out of that. Let's hope you don't have a big fucking little bear market coming then. <laughs> bear market. No, I'm, I'm feeling very bullish. He's feeling very bullish <laughs> and volatile. It's a, but no, I think I've, I feel I've gone through the worst. I, I think for me now, it's just finding my purpose of what I actually want to do. Purpose, like, yeah. And COVID made me think, who the fuck am I? Who am I? I used to look at myself in the mirror and think, who the fuck am I? What the fuck am I doing? Before that, I used to look and think, fair play. You have shagged some fit birds. No, but I would think, <laughs> I would sort of, uh, no, I'd think, uh, yeah, like, who am I? Who is this person looking back at me? Like, what do I actually want? What do you want, Lee? Do you ever look at yourself like that? And was that a night that you done brownies by any chance? Because I've uh, definitely had that. I don't know if I've done brownies. Sometimes I do look at myself in the mirror when I've been down and think, who am I? Yeah, I, I do, man. Like, I've, I've definitely had that. Like, question your fucking... Not even that, like, just question everything, man. I've got to a point where just, like, yeah, like, who the fuck am I? What the fuck am I? And then you start... The question everything you've done like almost like have I taken the wrong path like should have I gone down like I've done this I've questioned yeah, my, like, should, my uh, path. should, should I have stuck I, should have I done something else should have I gone down a different path I faced I fought, like so much like even to the point of relationship should I have not got out of that relationship years ago and then you start should've... regretting things and then yeah not regretting things but I think did I just stupidly have an argument and walk away from a good relationship without working on it we definitely live in a throwaway society yeah uh... yeah it's weird isn't it like there's no right or wrong like who knows like I do think I actually wonder this right talking about relationships say like someone down here no say me like I get with a girl down here tick over have a good relationship but that time that I was meant to get on a train and go up north with someone else who asked me to if I'd gone up there would I bumped into a girl that was so much more better and amazingly suited to me but I never know because I'm never thingy or is everything meant to pass meant you and cross you it's an interesting one I fu- mate that's like everything in life like you think if if for example one little thing in life, like one little decision, I think you just got to roll with it. I, got, I don't think you've got to deep it too much because I don't know if everything's meant to happen, but like, say, little things will change it. Like, for example, if you didn't, for whatever reason, go to Blackpool to see Will Smith, yeah, that time, for whatever reason, one little thing come up that stopped you going up there, you might not have seen, because this is I how we met. I might not have banged that blondie in my camper van. He, he banged a blondie in the camper van and then somehow, what did you do? You saw an article added up Added her on Snapchat. Yeah, added me on Snapchat and then messaged me because we had climbed something like that. But if you hadn't have gone there, like, we might not be sitting here right now. Do you know what I mean? We might have never known each yeah, other. Yeah, would, would we even know each other? That's it. Like, there. little thing, mate, I find that fascinating. To me, yeah, that blows my mind that, like, for example, like, like, even little things, like me, I'd done my carpentry apprenticeship. If I hadn't done, done my carpentry apprenticeship, I wouldn't have met my mate Callum, who was free running, Callum and Scotty, I wouldn't have gone to Redbridge Gym, I wouldn't have started free running, I wouldn't have met Ben and Ryan, and I wouldn't have done everything that that led to. That led me to this position where I am right now. I found free running, I found YouTube, I found all of that shit. Just by one little thing, by me doing my apprenticeship, that has fucking led me to him. Imagine I hadn't gone to that apprenticeship and I went to college. Literally my entire life up to now would be completely different. It'd be laid out completely different. Or would it? Maybe this was path was laid out for me and maybe I would have somehow found my way here anyway. But I do wonder if is your life kind of like already planned out? I don't think so, man. No, I don't think so. It's just... So if I punch you in the head now and knock you out and kill you, I'm going to prison. I don't know if I planned that out. Do you know what I mean? But then yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think out. your life is it's, your life can't be planned out, can it? But I find it really interesting that one little thing can snowball effect to everything, and that's the same, man. Like, bro, I actually, I believe I could actually achieve anything in life. Like, anything I actually, if I want it enough, put my and same as anyone. If you want it and put your mind to it enough, you can fucking go and get that shit. Like, it's weird. The more you think about life and start deep thinking it, oh, it gets dangerous. You add, you add, <laughs> yeah, a, brown, you add a brownie into the mix there, <laughs> get dangerous. Hash brownie and then. <laughs> No, it's game over for the mindset. Mm. No, life is life is random, isn't it? The more you think about it, 
mate, I actually, like, I think with social media and like living in the Western world, like, we've got too many options. Like, we think we compl- we overcomplicate life, man. Oh, I listen to this fucking like speech on YouTube, it fucking just hit me differently. And it was like we overcomplicate life. Like we, mm-hmm. yeah, still recording. I like this though. When you're talking on a podcast, you get lost in the conversation. Um, but yeah, listen to this thing, and it was like we all overcomplicate life. Like we want so much, we think that we always need more and more and more and more. But like, in fact, you actually have everything. Like we have everything we could ever need inside of us, and like the simple things. And mate, I'm guilty of this. I'm I'm talking like I'm fucking perfect. I'm probably worse than anyone with this. Like not appreciating the little things man like we all like right now in my head like I'm thinking oh, I want this I want that I'm not gonna be happy till I get here I'm gonna do this I wanna go fucking travelling like all the time mate an escape like I'm like oh I wanna go to Bali I wanna fuck I'm like fuck this country I'm escaping I'm going to Bali it's all an escape like deep down inside of us we mate we have everything we could ever need man like it's the little things like me and you right here like friendship family fucking working limbs a healthy body the fact that mate we live in the western world we've got a fucking tap there with water like we've got cookers but yeah, i think you've also got instagram showing you perfect relationships and people living amazing lives mate, I, my screen time is fucking awful and mate i had five weeks off of social media and honestly was in the best headspace of my fucking life and as we, soon we as did sit on a we did sit on a little remember the little chats about social media when we we're sitting on the boat talking about social yeah, media yeah mate it's if weird because we're uploading to social media we're like slagging social media off no but I think like, YouTube ain't social media yeah I it's trying mean, to make yeah. it yeah I don't think YouTube is I think. yeah like YouTube's more of a real although it can I don't know it's, yeah it's not really you're not scrolling are you? you're not scrolling you're watching entertainment even if it's entertainment but you can learn a lot as well but yeah Instagram like my screen time is scrolling Instagram and majority of that is absolute well, that's, bullshit that's your that then becomes your life yeah, yeah, that becomes your mindset because you're consuming that. If what I'm consuming you, yeah. Instagram for six hours a day, I'm what did consuming you, what did more you do? Instagram. Oh, I, I consumed what everyone else is doing. Isn't that a weird thing, man? Like, bro, you're fucking sat there. I'm sat there in my life. Like, I have these endless possibilities. I can go out and do whatever the fuck I want, and I choose to fucking sit there and do this on a. Fu- imagine, mate. Imagine that on an empty screen, bro. Like, imagine you're doing this on a cup for five hours. Well, a day. imagine like my granddad died years ago, like. Could look now and be like, what? So he yeah. spent a day spent looking a what day. everyone else is doing. When he had his own life, like he could go out. Like I can go out and do, mate. I can jump on a flight tomorrow to fucking Bali if I want. I can go fucking skydiving. I can go out. I can run down the road. I can go for a run. I can go swim at the beach. Whatever the fuck I want to do, I can do. Well, you can't go to Bali tomorrow. I can tell you. That well, I can't go to Bali tomorrow. Yeah, she's on lockdown. But you know what I mean. I can do most fucking things. Same with anyone here. You can go. Cut materialistic and money things out, like, well, you're free to go for a walk down the street, yeah, yet we decide to fucking sit there and scroll other people's lives, like, I am scrolling my phone of pointless fucking bullshit because it's giving me a little dopamine hit in my head because every couple scrolls, something good comes up, it makes me laugh, and like, ting, and then boom, back to the numbing scroll, mate, and I'm looking at fucking, yeah. I'm looking at Love Island stars and f- that I don't give a fuck about, I don't even know, and I'm looking at people in fucking Bali, and I'm looking at people skydiving, and I'm looking at Jay Alvarez with fit girls skydiving, and I'm looking at people fucking throwing cash around in their Lamborghini, and then whilst I'm sat there in my... What are they called? Line ones. Step ones. Step ones with skidders on it and just sat there chilling, you know what I mean? Like fucking questioning my own life. Like, mate, I'm deleting social media after this podcast. Fuck social media, man. Yeah, it's not good. If you can limit, if you can use it like, I, I stopped putting stories up really. I mean, I don't know who follows on me or who's on my Instagram. You might have noticed you rarely see anything. You might, any story I put up, it, it's probably business related some way <sighs> or the other now. Because I just think, I don't care if it, I get less engagement. I'm just. I just don't want a story, fun things that I'm doing. I just can't mm. be asked because I'm in the moment. I don't. I don't care. I found myself falling back into the habit of storing. But we went through. I think because at one point we were just storing loads, and we were talking. Remember, we used to talk about. It, we were like, because no one actually in the top of the social media game, like Logan Paul, all these boys, none of them really upload stories. I don't know what they're doing, but like. They well, it's fuck, it's they, not that. It ain't, it's not monetized. I'm not earning out of it. So what the fuck you uploading to? And yeah. if it's yeah, cool, people might love it, but. I don't enjoy it, so I'm not doing it. Yeah. If I don't enjoy putting stories up, and I don't want to, it's not making anyone's lives better. Maybe it was, they're getting a little laugh out of some of the stories, but that's just not me anymore. I just can't be asked to do that. Do you think being in a social media game or being in the limelight is very bad for your mental health? Like, for example, like Love Island stars, fucking well, it's quick, not that. quick shoot, shots to fame. 
they're shot to fame quick. If you've had time to come up slowly, like I think it's uh, a lot better. Like Bitcoin since 2013, come up slow. You've had time to appreciate it. When you put in the limelight, you went in as a normal person, and then you're chucked out. And everyone fucking knows you suddenly to like say like your level of walking down the street. What like you're talking? You like never you never had an in between of seeing that get more and more. You're like fucking hell. Like that. Yeah. Imagine the dopamine rushes you're getting off that. Like oh my god. Yeah, like actually, literally. You overnight didn't know. Thing. Yeah, like ridiculous. Yeah. They they're gonna like that's gonna hit them hard, isn't it? Like you've got your sort of fame, YouTube fame through, you, you, and you created that yourself, and you've seen it get more and more and more and more. Yeah. But, but if you're just suddenly shot there, you think fucking hell, I've made life probably. And then next minute, no one gives a fuck about you. Yeah, like no one's coming out and gonna be the next Ali Law. Because. Nah, nah, not true. Some people do. Some people come out and are. Like Tommy Fury, like Molly May, like there's a there's a there's a handful of them that make it big long term. Joey Essex, and then there's a lot of them that don't. But I think YouTubers control their own destiny. Do you know what I mean? No one's coming out and copying your style of stuff. Whereas Love Island, they're all personal. They're all known for being personalities. I mean, a few of them do like that. Like Tommy does his boxing or whatever. But a lot of them are personalities. So and, and then the next argue, year, the next year, there's a, there's another load. Yeah, there's that's where the danger comes. And then you're getting, you've almost got like you've gone from normal to superstar boom. to boom. Well, you've got yeah, coming out, you're getting paid a couple of grand to do club meets. Everyone loves you. Next minute, no one gives a fuck about you. Yeah, but then you could argue that's the exact same with YouTube, man. Like, if you're uploading, you can be at the top of your game. But if you're you don't in control that of that. You're in control of that, though. Yeah. But like I, I, like I could be much more getting more gigs than that if I was uploading, but I know why I'm not getting bookings because I, I'm not fucking uploading or doing much. Yeah, so you're controlling it. I see what you're saying. But then they don't know that. They think they, they're not aware of YouTube and social media. They're not YouTubers or they haven't created videos. So what are they going to... If they say, oh, do YouTube, they'll be like, what? What do you mean, do YouTube? What am I going to do? Do you know what I mean? They can't just suddenly do it. Yeah. And I bet I bet you could speak to some of them that would love an opportunity to come on like mine or your channels that, that are not doing anything particularly. Like some of them are doing big. Like a lot of them. I would love to speak to someone that's been in, been in like one of these reality shows and like got that superstar overnight, but then not so much anymore. Like I'd love to speak to someone at that level and see like where their headspace is at. Not someone that's like at the top because they're going to be in a bit of a. Yeah, like is anyone? I, I want. I want to speak to someone that's experienced the highs and the lows. You know, like someone that's shot up and shot down. Yeah. So if that's you, email address. Management at discoboy.com. Discoboyinfo at gmail dot com. That's the one. Um, yeah, someone that's really like. I mean, there's a lot of them. You see, like they, they get their big instas. They use it to promote their fitness stuff and that. And yeah, and, and like you say, like you get the ones that always shine through like that Kem and I can't remember what his name was Kem and Chris they were two they were like a little duo sure, they always yeah. done well I, could, I can't really it's not something I really watch nah it's not something I watch I, I remember that know. I remember the guy there's a guy around here Jack Fincham I remember him because he's a Kent boy yeah yeah I don't really know any of them but I just know of like yeah the few suicides and shit that's happened but that's because they was at the top and then they're just yeah they crashed down and just fucking they don't know what to do with their life I think fuck and they're not in control Mate. of their fame. Like they think, oh my God, my life's literally... Yeah, my life's so how, how can I go back to a normal job after everyone fucking knew me? I was... Look, Google my name. I'm in every fucking article. But yeah, suddenly, now I'm delivering pizzas and then you just yeah, feel, feel you think shit it's so, it, yeah. You'd feel so shit. And even like you, can you... From what you've come to, can you imagine yourself going to just an absolute normal job? How Mate, I couldn't. Like, I couldn't... Not, not, not the point that I'm above it, but the fact that, like... If I knock on someone's door, like if I go around Southampton doing fucking pizza deliveries, not being big headed, but probably fucking half the people will know me or maybe more. Like, like oh, how what can I do to, that? Oh, yeah, what happened to YouTube? Like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You was, yeah, you'd feel so shit. You'd for feel it. so shit, yeah, man. And like, but mate, I, I think with the similar to the Love Island thing, like TikTok stuff, like YouTube, still, mate, I think anyone at the top of the YouTube game is going to have bad fucking mental health problems because unless you've experienced it like anyone in the YouTube game will know what I'm fucking talking about but like unless you've experienced that level of fucking being recognised and known like you'll get anxieties you'll get fucking weird feelings you just won't feel like a fucking human half the time um, but TikTok stuff like you've gradually built that up so I get what Lee's saying but it's still not perfect but 
TikTok stars are very similar to the Love Island stars. TikTok is fucking the world up because I, I get, I get up. shitty Instagram stories and put them on TikTok and they get like fucking twenty thousand likes. Yeah. Now if, if a kid on TikTok is gets kid twenty thousand likes and thinks that's the norm, thinks oh why am I, why ain't I getting that on Instagram and YouTube? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking that's a story. No, that it's blowing no, up. But the, the on, danger TikTok's a fucking as a platform, mate. You can't bash it. Like as a platform, it's fucking amazing and any business or person or person trying to make it on the YouTube game and there's people mate Bryce Hall fucking all the people at the top of the TikTok game have, have made massive careers out of YouTube now like built massive followings and made millions of pounds and built a fucking whole career Addison Ray, all these but what I'm worried about is the kids man like imagine yeah all of a sudden a kid in high school yeah in fucking secondary school gets a video pop off on his channel yeah gets 100,000 likes next minute it, it, it'll be 100,000 likes for a shit video for a shit video so there's no creativity there there's no hard work or anything but then next minute his next video is not getting 100,000 likes his video after that ain't getting 100,000 likes TikTok algorithm so far you can get 100,000 likes on one video the next video 12 views 12 views yeah it's literally it's so but Where's the worry with kids like that, man? Like kids. Well, they're chasing gonna... it. They, I've seen the messages yeah, like, bro. "How can I get more followers and likes and stuff?" Mate, like, the kids nowadays, I think the younger generation, it, mate, this world is fucking doomed. Honestly, they're judged by like I think kids are like, ranked in school like oh, that's TikTok fucking. Followers, yeah. This is fucking Josh. He's got twenty k on Insta. Yeah, one hundred percent, you know I mean? mate. You know for a fact, yeah. Kids in school now. If a kid gets banging on TikTok and he's got fucking 100k on TikTok, he ain't getting bullied in school, let's be honest. He's getting fucking popularised, people are going to lick his ass, whole clean. What I like about TikTok... No, what I don't like about TikTok, you do original video, like, you come up with the little original, yeah, and then anyone copies. else can, everyone else copies, like, that's a thing on TikTok, copy, yeah. but you might get more likes than the original thingy. Like yeah. it's not saying be original. It's saying look, we've we've, 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 yeah, we've I've developed the app so we can you now copy that person. Yeah, I saw you do one, your own yeah. version. Yeah, I, I saw one. A guy like um, he was like after gym day, after leg day, and he was like sitting on the toilet. You know when you can't squat or you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a funny TikTok. It gave me a tickle. But then I was scrolling TikTok, mate. I saw loads of people doing different versions of it. So like, who created it? Who done the first one? Like, it's there's like no that. reward it's creativity about, yeah. there, is there? But I worry, mate. Honestly. If you're a fuck, I'm giving parental advice here, yeah. If I had fucking kids, mate, I ain't letting them go nowhere near TikTok. Honestly, that shit is going to fuck their head up. Like, it fucks my head up. Any social media, mate, any social media, mate, I'm banning my kids from social media till they're like 15, I swear to God. Like, I'm actually, I understand the value of social media and I'd teach them the importance of social media as like a business and that, but mate, I ain't letting them fucking scroll over people's lives, bro. That shit is deadly. And that is why, mate, kids are killing themselves. Bro, you're comparing your lives to other people's. It fucks my head up. It fucks your head up. You're a grown ass man. I'm a grown ass fucking man. What is it doing to an undeveloped brain, mate? Like a six year old, seven year old, watching that shit, yeah, comparing their lives. Mate, I meet multiple kids on they're the fucking. They're hooked on it, and they, you know, their parents just give them the, the laptops or the and iPads. They're just fucking scrolling. No, they're like annoyed, like, give me that. Ah. Yeah, but I'll give, them, give her the iPad. Yeah, give her the iPad. And Boom, quite, zombie, mm, bruv. Like a, it's, like, it's like you're giving them a dummy. Yeah, zombie. Do, do, do. And they know how to Easily play entertained. it. Easily entertained. They know how to do it. Like, yeah, mate, but it's important for kids to be on these things because... But then a little bit, take it off A little them. bit, mate. Not Give them, them a little bit of screen time and bro. bam, away. Oi, you know. Not even... I understand, but I'm not a fucking parent. I don't understand, but like... I understand that it's easy parenting, but mate, honestly, yeah, your kid, if you let them on social media a long time, it is going to do something. Mate, I suppose... I've, done, media, I've done gigs, right, where... Like everyone's up dancing, the kids have been given iPads, they're sitting there, like family occasions and just on the iPad. I think that's a family event. Like if I'm at events or family, it's like the phone goes away. Yeah. That's, you know, the disco, get up, dance, to have a laugh. That is not a time to pull out an iPad. Mm -hmm. and the parents are just like there, give the kid the iPad, that's what he wants to do. Like none, that kid's gonna grow up, have no personality. No just social like, skills, yeah. Like, oh, are you all right? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello, yeah, hang on, I'm just checking my emails. But, 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 I can't remember where the but was coming now. Fuck, I had a very good but, but it wasn't there. It's gone. No. Um, social media is deadly, man, for kids. It's fucking dangerous as fuck. Oh, it's a conversation not a lot of people are even interested in having, but I would say we've got a pandemic, epidemic, whatever the fuck you want to call it, of basically equivalent to six-year-olds that are fucking crackheads, man, because... 
that's doing this the same. It's dopamine in their brain. Yeah, you take that away from them, same responses as a fucking cokehead, crackhead heroin user when you take away his fix. Exact same thing, mate. And I'm a fuck it. I'm guilty, bruv. Take my phone away from me. I don't know why I'm saying bruv a lot, but take my <laughs> phone away from me. Sorry, I'm getting into this, but take my phone away from me. I'm an addict, yeah? I'll have withdrawal symptoms, mate. I'm yeah, an addict. Yeah, there's a thing. Bro, it's uh, so dangerous, This phantom man. vibrating syndrome where you think you feel like your leg vibrate, your phone's your vibrating. Your phone's vibrating when you haven't got your phone. Yeah, that's a legit mate, thing. I had five weeks off of social media and the first week was like going cold turkey off of fucking drugs, man. It was, it was deadly. But then after yeah. that, it was amazing. It was a beautiful experience and I really thought I cracked it. After the five weeks, I went back and for... Probably a month, I was like not really interested in social media at all, and then slowly by slowly it crept back in, and now I'm an addict again. Um, but yeah, for kids, man, like that shit's dangerous. Like, I take pictures with kids daily. Like, that sounds very wrong. But I take pictures with kids that um, come up to me, like probably like between like, like what like 12 year olds, maybe 13 year olds, and this happens like pretty much daily. And I'll see them tagged on Instagram. This is like a common thing with kids up to probably like 13 years old, I'd say. And you've seen it, innit? I've showed you. What, where they blur their They faces? scribble their face out, man. Like, if you go to my Instagram, look on tagged photos, you'll see it quite a bit. They scribble their face out, and it's because they don't fucking like the way they look, man. That's they so think, bad, bro, it? like, in their head, yeah, a kid doesn't believe he is acceptable because he's scrolling Instagram and he's seeing six packs and beautiful fucking looking people that aren't real constantly. So he believes and she believes that they're ugly, man. That's and mad. Like, they're I, not that age, looking. I didn't even give a shit what I look like. No, man, but like, Mate, and you've got kids that want lip fillers and filters. Mate, yeah. the world's fucked. I don't actually want to be a part of this world anymore, I don't think. This world is fucked, man. I don't actually want to bring kids into this world, I don't think. Oh, I think I'll go through stages like that. Mate, this world is fucked. I'll go through stages thinking I don't want to bring kids into this world. It's this fucked. world is fucked, man. Then, then, when, then we met Callum's baby. Yeah, it made What's him that baby bit. called? Mini. Mini, such a cute baby. <laughs> yeah, it would be cool to have a baby. Oh, if I have a baby, mate, I ain't bringing him up in England and he ain't having a phone and honestly... I'm going to... Oh, Costa Rica's got it right, man. They have kids in school. They don't wear uniforms. They teach them creative shit, like things that they're creative. Like, say, say for example, you're really hands-on and you're enjoying fucking making things and building blocks. They oh, what, teach they, you. They, they've they, got their own... The school's got its own algorithm. It's got its own algorithm, so it finds what you're good at, mate, and it pushes the algorithm, just like TikTok. But honestly... It's like that saying, isn't it? Uh, that thing... Tell a fish to climb a tree and it will live its whole life thinking it's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, you line up things like in school that we're all taught the same system yet we're all different people. So yeah. Lee might be very good at plumbing, I might be fucking shit at plumbing but might be good at fucking science. But we're taught the exact same system, you know what I mean? Like they're not teaching him plumbing. I he, think I'm yeah, I think I'm hands on with quite clever technical bits. I don't know what I'm good at, man. I think I'm just a lazy cunt to be fair, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I, used to I do good. think that lockdown and think, what am I good at? Like, what am I actually good at? I think I have very good, if I was to say one thing I think I'm good at, customer service. In but I don't way. buckle under pressure. You put in, you could put me behind a bar and I'll make that bar run. Yeah, put you're me, a very good so, person, put, put someone, person. Put someone kicking off angry about, like say, like, I don't know, the shop, an angry customer. Put me there and I'll just blank that on the manager. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, I could deal with that. Like, someone shouting at me doesn't bother me. Oh, it put, I, I'm bad at that. I'm not good at taking pressure. No, I won't. Like, I yeah. get all emotional on it. If someone's like, well, nah, not, not recently. Like, in jobs, I remember when I was like doing my jobs and getting screamed at and that by my manager. That would make me like shake inside and I'd like, like a little bitch, man. I'd like cry, like like secretly. Like I'd cry. Like that made me proper. Sad. I haven't had it recently, like because obviously I've been my own boss. Like, I haven't had to answer to anyone. Anyone shouting at me, it doesn't affect me. But like before, I used to. Be, I'm not very good at dealing with people shouting at me, man. I, I think just, yeah. I think I'm good at like yeah, like hospitality. Like from yeah. from DJ and people coming up, I can everyone that comes like now and, again, now and again, person, now and again, now and again, I think like you get the annoying cunt. You think, but I can deal with them like her, 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 just sort of laugh, you know, but. I think I'm good like that, and a uh, bit musically. I think I think I can host a good disco night. You're a very good um, entertainer. Very good entertainer with people. Like you're good at talking to people. Like I've seen you on your nights out, and like, I, I just ain't I ain't that person. Man. I ain't good at that. But everyone's different, isn't it? Mm. But like, my next thing, my next thing, I'm moving on to entertainment. I'm mm. learning guitar. I think that this the that's the direction I'm going in. Oh shit! You got one a day, lesson in the morning. One day, people will be somewhere and be like, "Oh, disco boy solo acoustic guitar act." They'll be like, but a lot of people don't know. I wonder what that's wonder what that's about. But one person in that like, group of folks will be like, "Disco boy, guy. that's the guy that, that went in as the market." They go in there, see me like, 
<laughs> playing the guitar like wow 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 no this life is about trying as many fucking things as you possibly can but I really want to, at the moment that's something I have like passion for it's weird because I can't even play guitar but that's something that's really tickling me up I think oh, I'd love that I'd lo- I'd I remember love like it. a year ago wanting to do that remember yeah, when we were I've away been, like I've been Wales playing and... it on and off but yeah at the moment every day I'm picking up the guitar and I'm just sort of getting used to bits and pieces while Sally's munching them little I'm co- going to have to buy another coffee pack. biscuits are they coffee biscuits oh, I ain't coffee biscuits right then yeah they're £13 a kilo no they're not no they're for coffee they've not got coffee in them I'm going to have to buy a new pack I'm not going to laugh basically munch the whole thing I'll go buy a new pack where do you get them from definitely specials I, I don't know Fuck Wait, should, should we wrap this up though drink mm, this um, I was going to talk about one more thing what um what? Fuck, I forgot what I was about to say. I had a fucking good break. Hurry, hurry up, hurry up, because I'm, edi- I'm not editing this. <laughs> it's just a straight up It's raw. too long to edit. My, yeah, my Mac won't handle it. I've only got an i3 i3 processor. Well, it's an iPhone 6 as well. Gonna, have you got enough memory on that? Filming it with the iPhone 6. <laughs> nah, he's, not, he's got, got an actual camera. But, um... Fuck, I had a good little fucking point then. Mate, it's got late. It's probably like literally 2 o'clock in the oh, morning. Right. I'll I just say it. I'll just refer to late as 2 a.m., as you probably realise from this podcast. But, um... What's the meaning of life, Lee? The meaning of life? Good question. I don't, does it have a meaning? Are I we living in a simulation? I believe we're living in a simulation. Man. It's weird. The more you like gaze up and think, what is it? It's just about being happy, isn't it? And not, not questioning it too much. The more you start deep thinking... It gets bad. Yeah. Like, if, you, if you're just happy... Like, I've been there, like, happy... And I didn't really care about much else. Money was just coming in. But when you start taking things away, I think I think the happiest I've been, when money's coming in, I have a cool girl in my life, and you picture a few, pick, you sort of picture a future in your head, and you're not really caring about where money comes from, and you think you've got your... It's when you build, start feeling like you're building your own little... your own team, do you know what I mean? Your own tribe. Yeah, like thinking, this is a cool girl, I would have children with this girl... When you start seeing that vision, you think, this is what life's about. That's, that's how I feel now. I think life, mate, I actually think life is about people. Like, no matter what you're doing in this life, we ain't made to be on our, our own. You put yourself on no, your well, own. Well, you're not, you're not. Like, we have penises and girls have vaginas. Mm. And the feeling of putting the penis in the vagina... It's great. It's very nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> no, it, it, it is. And especially when you have feelings for that person, it's fucking amazing to actually, like, be in love with a girl and have sex and chill with them. And that is, is, a, is a great feeling. Yeah, I think. when you find someone that you actually really like and you just click with, it's a, it's mm. a very good feeling, yeah. But you, you're loved up now, aren't you? I'm loved up now. How is that for you? That's that's why you've stopped everything, really. That's the realistic reason. <laughs> I've grown up. We're looking to have kids, bringing kids into the TikTok world. Um, no, it's good. It's good to find someone that you can chill with and that makes you happy, and you can just spend time with each other and like. Just and you, you can chill. Company. You can chill doing nothing, and it's not. Yeah, wa- you can chill not, doing nothing. And it's fucking and it, amazing, and it's not wasted time. Whereas before, chilling on your own with your left hand in the old van not a great feeling but no like mate not even girls like people in general friends family and girls like all of it you need people mate you go on your own I've travelled on my own and shit it's fucking dead man like being on your own is a shit thing as a human being but do you like, find when you travel on your own you just meet people and bash into oh even, yeah even yeah, when yeah. we was in Bali I mean like, I went off like odd, odd day and then I was just random with a group of people Oh yeah, and we mate, got on the like, right, and then if you was there, you probably wouldn't have wanted to chill in a bar with this random group of people. But I got on with them. You'd have probably been like, "Oh no, I want to yeah, go." Yeah, because people. But didn't. when you're travelling on your own, yeah, you, you can't do what make, you want. When, you do, yeah, and yeah. No, no one's going. Oh, like Let's do that's this. why. I feel, if I travel anymore, I'd probably go off on my own. I think I'd like to do it more because you've done it much more than I ever have. Yeah, just proper go off on my own. Yeah, no, no. The thing is, like, say, yeah, we travel together. Our ideas of thingy are the same. Like, our ideas of happiness or fun is different in ways. Like, you like going out. I don't like going out, like, to clubs. Um, so, yeah, ideas. Whereas if you're on your own, you can do exactly what you want. If you want one day to go fucking quad biking, you can go quad biking. If you, and you always, mate, when you travel on your own, you're never on your own. But I travelled once to Australia on my own, and I was, like, hitchhiked around, and I was proper on my own for, like, Probably like a couple of weeks. Like, but obviously I met people hitchhiking that, but ultimately like every night I'd be on my own and that shit 
ain't good for you, man. Like we're as humans are meant to be with other people. Not even, mm. I mean, not even like relationships. I'm talking friends, family, fucking relationships, all of it. Yeah, just people, people that make you happy, like people that you vibe with, people that make you happy, people that can inspire as well. Like like you said, like you need to be hanging around with people that are talking about growth, that are talking about businesses that are talking about fucking self-development like you if, stocks yeah you need you yeah uh, yeah gym like anything that's moving like, forward in yeah, life. Anything if, if you're talking different. about other people what they're up to yeah, behind the back fucking he's a fucking off. bitch she's a bitch she's thinking that's no good find yourself some new friends um yeah yeah basically we're all guilty of it and it we're all guilty of fucking all that shit but yeah you need like i feel like most of the people that I hang around surround myself with are like talking about self-growth in some way like trying to develop themselves and i learn a lot from people i've learned a lot from you i've learned a lot i've learned a lot from all my mates like talking about the future talking about growing if you're not hanging around with people that are doing that fucking find yourself some new mates in it um but yeah you need to surround yourself you, you basically become who you surround yourself with and that's facts like, yeah i think if you look if you look they say don't you if you look at the people that you're hanging around with and you think they're all idiots so basically yeah if you think they're all idiots you are an idiot but basically, they say, what's that saying? If you, if you hang around five millionaires, you become the sixth millionaire. So I need to find myself some millionaire friends. So sadly, Lee, I can't keep hanging around with you. That's fair enough. We ain't gonna fucking become millionaires out here if we're hanging around with each other because none of us are millionaires. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, I do, I do think I'd like to be a millionaire though. Do you think being a millionaire would make you happy ultimately, or do you think? No, 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 no. I don't think it would make me happy at all. I, I would like the freedom. Or yeah. thinking like these plane tickets don't matter. Yeah, like spending like, a like, grand. Like, 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 you know, Skyscanner going to Reykjavik just because I'm saving £39. I'll just be like, Fuck I'll just take it. a direct flight. Yeah. Uh, Do you feel like you'd still cool be... Staying in cool hotels, staying in cool hotels. And then I think if you had that money, you'd meet people that have also... Or on that level that have, yeah, like... People that better level. than you. People that are better than your current self because they're no no out. not not, <laughs> not people that are better like. than me people like oh you're staying in this hotel what brings you here oh, they're like yeah. oh, well, I do this and that and you're like oh, how did you earn your money to be here like you're all, all on that level yeah, yeah, whereas yeah. when you're in a hostel like oh, what you're up to oh, I'm doing that you're all sort of on the same level yeah I get what you're saying I get what you're do you saying. know what I mean but there's something good about just staying in hostels man. roughing it with real you know what I find people that ain't got money usually real like, yeah, a lot. Uh, yeah, I have. I've stayed in hostel in Dubai, and well, man, I actually no rate hostels ones. a lot. You know. Yeah, no, it's, it's a cool atmosphere. But some, I see I'm, what you're saying. Some hostels well. I'm a bit wary of. Like, I think I don't like that. I don't need to be there. But some yeah. of them, I think some. Yeah, some, some of, of them are nice. What, what, some I've stayed in where there's like no English speaking people, and I get a bit like, I'm a bit wary of that. I feel like. But some of them I've stayed, I've gone to, and I'm like, fucking, everyone's on a vibe here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And they so, take you in, like if you're the new person, yeah, come on in, this is thingy, this is thingy, that's cool, like, I don't know what your experience of hostels are like. Yeah, yeah, everyone's, mate, everyone's sort of on the same vibe, isn't it? Everyone's sort of the same I want to do more, like, solo travelling, just for that. Mate, I think if you solo travel, stay, but I wanna, stay I wanna in a kind hostel of, and you meet fucking cool people everywhere. Yeah, I know, and then, I, I can't even think who I stay in touch with who I've ever met in a hostel in my life, but... Yeah, remember, yeah. I remember when I was last in Dubai, this guy was like really intrigued, like no one else went to the gym. I was like, oh, he goes, yeah, we can use the gym here, Are you want to come? And then like, uh, no I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm up for that. But I went to the gym with this guy, I can't remember where he was from or what he was doing. <laughs> He's like well smaller, but in the gym he was doing the weirdest stuff. I like what? Just like uh, the kettlebells, like obviously I think I'm, I'm quite clued up in a gym what to do. I was just getting on with my thing, but he was like, like, like Proper girl stuff, like nothing against it, but just like this was a proper like. Oh, he'll be watching this podcast. This was a proper. This was a pro gun. This was a proper. This was a proper man's like steel. Everything was made of solid steel. Wait, what was gym. he like? What was? Where was he from? I don't even know. I think he was French, but he was getting like a, <laughs> a kettlebell. Like everyone else was like, bro, and he's like. Nah, that's a solid worker. I've, oh no, I've done that. Re I've done that recently. I've done <laughs> that recently. He won't do it in that. He'd do that, and then he'd, he'd have to wait that way. <laughs> no, it's just not real. Don't knock it, no, Lee. No, There'll be real... some personal trainers in it. It will be telling you that's a real good workout, actually. You have to be there because no, it, well, it, maybe it's good for him, but it was just a real odd work. It was so light, he could do like fifty of these things. <laughs> I think, like, you could go away and like, I don't know, it's just. <laughs> It just cracked me up because I thought, oh, he's going to go to the gym. I wonder what he does. And yeah. then just to see this real odd workout. 
Yeah, but he might be funny. saying, oh, I went to the gym, got this lad, like you could tell he was into his gym, went there. He goes, he was looking at me, I was doing the weirdest shit, but his reaction was priceless. Oh, well, like, yeah, he's pranking you, your little hidden camera in the corner. Who knows, but no, it was, it was quite funny, but he's on a journey, we're all on a journey. We're all on a journey, become millionaires. I want to become a millionaire. I wonder if I, I will be a million, millionaire. Some of us are... Uh, mm, I think right now there's more opportunity to be a millionaire than ever in history before. Like, for young people as well. Like, before, back in the day, you had to be a fucking 60-year-old business owner that worked his way up through the ranks of the CEO to become a millionaire. Now, mate, you can fucking sell NFTs from your bedroom. Join in Wealth your Squad. In your boxers. In the Wealth Squad, fucking banging money out. I don't understand F- NFTs. I don't know about NFTs. And I don't want to know about NFTs. Don't knock it till you try it, Lee. Well, have you, have this you is sa- this NFTs? is sounding like oi. This is sounding like someone in 2013. Like imagine we're in 2013 right now and someone's talking about Bitcoin. Mate, I'm only I'm only just on Bitcoin now. Yeah, but the fact that you've managed to buy 14 Bitcoins not too bad, Lee. Do you know what I mean? For a beginner, do you know what I mean 1.2 million? It's not even bad. He hasn't. He hasn't. No, before, wish. before. Oi, someone. Mate, I wish I knew about Bitcoin. Like, like doesn't everyone? I've got, I've got some. Uh, no, but this is what I've I'm saying. I've got some, some, some money in crypto, but uh, imagine if them ones actually blow up and like people are like, oh, if you'd had, no, imagine in like 10 years, people like, yeah, people knew about this crypto you're in. Yeah, and you were in it. But no, that's what I'm saying about NFTs. Imagine, yeah, you're knocking NFTs now because you don't know about it and it seems something stupid. In 10 years, you could be like, fuck, I just wish I knew about NFTs back then when I was in it. Mate, I think there's a couple. Of, I think a lot of it's noise. I don't know enough about it. A lot, a lot. I think, mate. I think it's still early because majority. If, when your mum and dad's got cryptocurrency, you're going to be late. But I think looking at the system, the world's going, and everything's digitalized, right? Everything's becoming digitalized. Cryptocurrency, mate. You just have to follow. So if Elon Musk is buying fucking Bitcoin, and fucking the owner of Twitter, Jack, has like twenty percent of his net worth or something into Bitcoin, you only have to basically do simple math to say and like massive corporations are buying it you only have to do simple math to see follow what Elon Musk is see that it's no but see that it's going to be big like the same as the national the the fucking world economic forum in their plan for the fucking future like the new world order whatever you want to call it the 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 build back better scheme whatever the fuck they call it cryptocurrency is in that like they want the world to go fucking cashless it will. and they want and it will it will and it will be cryptocurrency but it just depends there's a million different coins what ones are going to stand out which ones actually hold value i don't know enough about fucking any of them i know a few good old xhv holds actual real value and like, there's a couple that hold real value but i remember ethereum in 2017, I was following a guy called Jeff Lombardo, who's a photographer, and he was swearing by Ethereum, and it was at $30. And really? I, I remember he posted about it every fucking day saying, buy Wait, Ethereum. When was that? 2017? 2017, $30. Um, he was like, buy Ethereum, buy Ethereum. It fucking blew up to $300. And I was like, fuck! Obviously, I was a FOMO buyer, fear of missing out buyer. I bought in at $300. Um, I bought two Ethereum at $300. I remember I was in Hong Kong at the time. Basically, 2017, I earned money off of a video. I was working in a trampoline park. I made, no, late, like, I earned the money, like, late end of 2016. I earned about four grand off of a video, like this killer clown parkour video. I was working in a trampoline park, refreshed my phone. I was on fucking minimum wage, saw four grand, like, thousand, refreshed the page, 1,300. I was like, I've made $300 whilst I've been fucking, literally, like, 10 minutes. I was mad. I earned four grand in total off the vid, which is shit because it was in the 2016 ad apocalypse when like cpm was at its all-time fucking lowest i was getting like a 10 cent cpm or something um around four grand went traveling around australia ended up in hong kong went traveling for six months ended up in hong kong and i had 600 dollars in my bank account um and my flight no 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 no. i think i had 900 and i had enough of the flight home and I, I basically got a tooth infection long story got a fat tooth infection my face blew up i didn't have enough money to go to a dentist in hong kong i was like right my trip's over i've done six months i've ran out of money now and i spent my last 600 on ethereum 600 dollars i had two ethereum and i left it in coinbase and it just got locked out like i got locked out of the account i needed to verify some fucking email address or something. it got locked out for years and i just left it there and i told alex farrell about bitcoin in 2018 after the crash obviously i bought and then it crashed and it went low again in the beginning of 2018 and then alex farrell nearly well he bought a bit he bought a little bit of bitcoin yeah, can you not get the, have you got the yeah i got it i got it out um 
What was it worth? I think I cashed out of it and like bought some other coins at like 3k a coin, 3k. Oh, so, so you'd made a lot? Yeah, I made a bit on it, like quite a bit, but I just gutted. Now imagine I spent that $600 a week before when that Jeff was saying, when it was $30, I would have had fucking, what, 10, 20 Ethereum. Imagine that, man. Like he would, Imagine Ethereum right now, yeah, it's just crashed. It's at like 3k right now. It was at 4k last week. 3k, man. Imagine buying in three thousand pounds worth in 2017 but that's what i'm saying right now if you pick your coins wisely i think there's money to be made in cryptocurrency it's going to be the future like what, i don't get, know do you reckon it's just worth investing in the top 20 like four or five of each you don't know because if they only knows, go to a couple of grand it's not going to make you but if you buy 800 the of thing, each the thing basically you need to, if you put 20 grand into the top 20 you're and probably two, two, basically three, gonna and ten, no top 10 and two grand each I think obviously I'm not a financial expert don't fucking take this as advice I know fuck all about economics or fucking cryptocurrency or finances but the way that I see the world going I see all the top people investing in that I think the World Economic Forum talk about it it's their plan for the future top people in the whole fucking world the smartest people and the richest people in the world are all investing in it it's gonna have some sort of play in our future some sort of some sort of part of our future I think if you chuck money into fucking some coins in 10 years, I think pretty much fucking anything's gonna be worth more than it is, like, or maybe it goes the other way and only a couple of them survive and all of the rest fail, I don't know, but I would, mate, I've got a bit of money in quite a few different coins, like not massive amounts, but a little bit, but again, don't invest in anything that you're gonna, f only invest what you're willing to lose, really, like, I think, well, never, not, invest I think what, not. never invest stupid amounts that you can't afford to lose, but. Or well, don't invest what you don't actually need at that moment in time. Yeah, yeah. Don't invest, don't fucking remortgage your mum's house for it, but mate, I think just looking at, like, you don't have to be a genius to work that out. I think it's going to play a big part in the future, and I think there's some serious money to be fucking made, and I hope hope some of the investments I've put in, I'm hoping I'm part of it, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I find weird? Like, be the, the money, money out your bank account, you go, it goes into that thing, the system, and then it gets converted to that. Where's the money from the bank gone? But you say that, where is our money from the bank? Like when you it's put- It's on a computer somewhere. It, it's like, all digital, mate. Like your not, money in the bank isn't actually, the banks don't have your money. Like money doesn't exist. Like you- There's not you, enough cash. If everyone drew the cash out, there's not enough cash. There's not there. enough cash, mate. Fiat currency, all currency. And I did not realize this until about a year ago. Well, not even a year, six, seven months ago. My, all of it's bullshit. Money's a scam. Like all, everything in this system is a lot. Like mate, money, is a piece of paper at the end of the day, yeah? And not only that, obviously it's fun tokens, you can do whatever you want with it, you can buy houses, but at the end of the day, it's a fucking number on the screen. Mate, I earn money, yeah? I hold it in a business bank account, a Barclays bank account, which I have to fucking pay for. It's not a lot, like six pound a month or something, yeah? I have to pay for that, yeah? I keep a large amount of money in that business account, all they're doing with it is making money on my money. They're, Barclays are loaning that money. Say, for example, I earn, Say for example, let's put it let's put it simple terms, a hundred grand, yeah. If you earn a hundred grand and keep it in savings, which older people have a hundred grand in savings, you keep that in your bank account. I'm paying the bank to keep my money in their bank. I'm getting some 0.0.0.0.1% interest on it. I'm basically earning fuck all, and they're loaning that to Mrs. Fucking Jones down the road for a, a, a mortgage. They're lo loaning my money to some other cunt for a mortgage, and that cunt is paying them an interest. I'm paying them to keep my money in a bank account, digits on a screen, and they're loaning it to other people to make money off of it. Weird, it's a massive it? scam. Like the world is a massive scam. And I didn't realise this till I'm 24 years old. I've not. I've only just learned this recently. I've always thought. I've always thought, mate. Literally until six, seven months ago, that you're better off with money in the bank. Yeah. You're not better off with money in the bank. I've only been learning this. I've put so much time and fucking effort into learning about this. Yeah. I've always grew up my life thinking. Oh, all these people that actually have money and things they don't actually have cold hard cash like that's dumb like you want cold hard cash I've always thought cold hard cash well not cash or actual cash like money in the bank I don't actually have cash but money in the bank and it's dead watches mate. you know watches this is what people yeah watches, watches hold value well, man I didn't, I didn't know about watches until well recently like, I, I used to think people just have flashy think, watches yeah I used to think it's dumb but, I know, but watches a hold market, value yeah. yeah I never knew all this but mate your money in the bank I keep money in the bank every year my bread prices go up Fucking petrol prices go up, fucking cups go up, 
Poundland price. I was in Poundland today. Nothing's a pound anymore. Freddo's like, go up. Milk go up. Freddo's go up. Yeah, Freddo's is a good way to sort of um, judge the current. They've got smaller, but they've gone cu- up. Current climate. The I want to. I want to campaign outside Downing Street about the price of Freddo's. Imagine yeah. that, like real serious shit going on the world. I saw them sixty-five oh, wait, p. Hey? I remember when I was at school. A Freddo was two and a half centimeters wide by four centimeters. Now it's three point four ten p. Now a Freddo is twenty-five p with no caramel <laughs> and it's only two <laughs> centimeters by four centimeters this is absolutely disgusting mate oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. throwing bricks a violent protest no but think at one point mate a tesco meal deal in soon coming times is gonna be up to three pound fifty or four pound that's gonna be a gut in time but yeah as i was saying my money is in the bank it's fucking wasting away i've always thought up until 24 years old again school doesn't teach you fuck all about the real world mate i lived to 24 years old thinking cash in the bank is better cash is king cash is bollocks mate cash in the bank the bank is only loaning it to other people and making money off of my fucking money and charging me to keep my money in their account it's a big scam and again money is a number on a screen like you say cryptocurrency is a number on the screen your money in the bank is a number on the screen obviously it's probably a little bit safer because you could you could draw it out but it's not safer in terms but it's more stable and less volatile i guess but mate i don't understand how like they print money and money holds its value in us dollars and different currencies i don't understand fucking really any of it but fiat currency it's all a scam and i think you're better with your money in assets your money forex. Only, just i don't know what oh, i didn't even know i'm stupid i didn't even know forex, forex meant was foreign exchange foreign exchange yeah <laughs> yeah i didn't know that yeah, it's just like all the exchange, all the... And that's why, that's how it's worth more than like thingy, because one's worth more than against the other. Yeah. I never even knew how it yeah. I don't until know how it worked. Until I lost, unless, until I tried Forex trading recently. How much did you lose? A couple of grand odd, and then I was like, this is not for me. I remember that, Lee was like on the phone, wanted like two grand, you're like, got two, oh, it's going up. It was literally like gambling, like in a minute. Like, oh, I've oh, never lost seen. It. Oh, fuck, oh, I've, lost never seen I've never lost five hundred pounds so quick. I put oh. it in, thought I sussed it out. I've never seen it drop so far. Like it was going oh. down in seconds. It was going like 10, 20, 30, 70, minus yeah, 100, 120, 170. I was like thinking, oh shit. Then I, if I, the thing is, I cashed. If I didn't cash, it went back. Then it went back up. <laughs> I didn't know. I was just very scared. Mate, but, I think that's sounding awfully like gambling, though. The way you were like, oh, 500 quid just gone. Mate, gambling's... But I, I don't think I've ever actually properly gambled, you know. I've never actually bought a scratch card in my life. Nah, nah I don't... Mate, I think gambling's a big thing. But cryptocurrency is sort... Like, people say it's gambling. I My, my mind on it is, yeah, mate... If you do your research... My you're wallet... Not, count, it's, a high, it's a highly calculated risk. Yeah, it's risk. a highly calculated risk. And it I think really long, pay term, off. long term, mate... Guy I follow, Chris Johnson, his wallet is down, well, yesterday was down 220 grand, one of his wallets, well, one of his share accounts, 220 grand, his other one was down 80 grand, and his cryptocurrency he said he didn't want to look at, but, like, long term, if you're holding these things long term, mate, things fluctuate, like, my, what I've put into cryptocurrency, I'm not looking at for 10 years, I don't give a fuck if it goes up today, I don't give a fuck if it goes down tomorrow, like, I'm not looking at that, like, obviously take little glances, but that's down the line but like gambling itself is actually just a big scam like for what you done with forex is sounding awfully yeah, like gambling. i do like the idea of crypto i do think like in five ten years you oh, you, oh you've leave i see you've got a ferrari the crypto paid off the crypto paid off <laughs> mate yeah. you think about it crypto people paid off. yeah and then be like oh you, yeah you're still working in starbucks yeah the, but the crypto paid the crypto off did pay off but you think people in 2013 that were buying bitcoin for a dollar mate Bro, they were telling people like it's not. Re- in no one was telling from... me. On this, no one was telling me in 2013, were they? Yeah, no one was fucking telling me either. But if they did, Lee, I bet you would have told me. I would have bought it. Yeah, right no, off. I wouldn't have. I'd be one would of the people who up for that. Anything that's a bit dodgy, I'll, I'll like the sound of that. Imagine you bought hundred dollars of Bitcoin, mate. You'd be laughing. Because yeah, I had, I had money. But, I, had, I had little businesses, and then I was always looking for things. If people but, told me that, I would have, I would have definitely would have gone for a it. Bit in it. No, but what you got to think now? What are we doing right now, actively? That in ten years is gonna fucking pay off. Actively. Realistically, if you just chuck one hundred and fifty quid into literally a hundred different fucking coins, is one of them just gonna blow up and make you loads? I don't know. Because oi, you've got to think. Yeah, say Cardano, ADA, yeah went from i bought in at 70 cents and it went to like three dollars but say cardano going from set like let's say cardano going from one dollar to two dollar is the exact same in your investment as bitcoin going from fifty thousand to one hundred thousand 
But have you got to have you, you got to have the same number email address? You just can't lose that shit, can you? Yeah, but it's just like anything. It's like you lose your YouTube account if you lose your email address. Just you ain't really ever gonna get logged out your email address. Make sure you've got a fucking two-factor verification phone, a different phone. Like what I do is I have a completely different phone and SIM card to the number that I actually use. No one has this other number. That's my two-factor verification phone on a phone. Yeah, but if you leave the phone off long enough, it will disconnect from the network. Nah, that's a contract SIM. Is that? Yeah, I pay like three pound fifty a month for it. Well, like, just leave it. Yeah, and that's my two-factor verification for like YouTube, everything, and. Oh shit! You actually do that. Yeah, no one. So do you know what I mean? No one. So that's what you want to do. Have your account fully secured, mate. Wham bam! Thank you, man. We're all going to be fucking fat millionaires in a couple of years, and I'm very excited about it because the one thing I do want that's very materialistic is a jet ski. I really want to own a jet ski. I've never been on a jet ski yeah. in my life. Never. Never been on a jet. Never been. I've done we so need, many we need mad to things. Link with uh, my friend in her. Billy, break. right? We hit her up tomorrow because I'm actually down for a fucking jet ski. Lee, we got jet ski's fun. But should we just end, should we end this? It's gone very long. What time is it? Go check the time quick. I, I can't see it. My doesn't, phone's there. It doesn't sound on the screen. Oh, I've got my phone. Oh, you've got your phone. Okay. What time is it? Oh, 2 a.m. That's ridiculous. One fifty-eight. It's got late. Um, right. but yeah, it's been good. Should How long have we been this? doing this? Two hours? I don't know. Two hour we'll podcast. Have a look when it ends. Right. But right, guys, if you've watched this far... Fair play. Fair play to you, yeah. And, uh... Yeah. The Lee Marshall podcast NFT is Let us know what soon. you think. Do you think we should be uh, people and interview other people? Let us know what you'd like to see. Yeah, let us know if you'd like to see us start a podcast together because I'm running a podcast, Lee's running a podcast, and we're thinking about running a podcast together. Let us know. I think it would bang. I like the idea. Um, me and Lee interviewing guests. Lee's an entertaining guy. I'm all right, I think. Um, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know if I've. I don't know, what did you, what did you think of yeah, it? What did like, you think I, of I need to work, I mean, I've never really done anything like this, but I think... I think you should go on Jack Mate's podcast, I think that'd be good. Too washed for that. <laughs> Too washed up for that. <laughs> Too washed up for that. Um, yeah, it's been fun, man. It's right, guys. Fun. We've got a meeting at 10am, fuck, eight hours sleep. I'll man, see you later. Even. Fuck, Lee, we've got... Oh, right. oh, mate, what a nightmare. Right, guys, see thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to Lee's Peace. channel. Peace. Or imagine noticing as you turn it off, no audio.